koinonia. Partnership, the sharing, drinking from the same vessel of the mystery. So you can partake of a mystery, not just an anointing. You can partake of the grace that has made a man to see and you will see the same thing. The Lord began to deal with us yesterday on hosting his power. We're still going to explore along power and impartation. God began to adjust our understanding to see and understand the dynamics of true spiritual power. Isaiah chapter 35. My assignment tonight is first and foremost to Help us by the spirit understand the value of spiritual empowerment. Because until you recognize the value for a thing, the, the energy to pursue is not there. Isaiah chapter 35, we'll read the first six verses. The wilderness and the solitary place shall be glad for them and the desert shall rejoice and blossom as a rose. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy and singing. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of our God. Verse 3. It says, strengthen ye the weak hands. It says, and confirm the feeble knees. Verse 4. Say to them, who are of a fearful heart. Be strong. Fear not. Behold. Your God will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. As a result. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as an heart. And the tongue of the dumb shall sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. The Bible paints a picture of what can happen to a person and an environment when the power of God is introduced. Many believers have not been trained to see the value of spiritual empowerment. For many believers, spiritual empowerment is... is it's an elective that you choose if you are interested in doing ministry. So if you do not have any passion for ministry, it's unnecessary, it's a nuisance. All I need is just the word. But the word did not make any meaning until the word was empowered. You are not a blessing until you are empowered spiritually. You read from Genesis to Revelation. There was no one who had capacity to do God good without God anointing him. God will make a man, build that man, teach that man the systems of the kingdom. And then when all is said and done, among the many things, he will grant access to his anointing. I hope you know that God's power, God's anointing is not... The same anointing that God works with is what he gives you. So that your possibilities can match. Because man does not have in himself the capacity to produce God's dimension of results. If it is the Lord's doing, then it is marvelous. If it's not marvelous, it was your doing. You don't clap for me for walking. It's human to walk. There's nothing supernatural as it were about walking. But when you begin to manifest a dimension not given to men, it proves that there was an energy that was outsourced. No one was allowed to serve in the temple without empowerment. No matter how silly the responsibility was, you needed empowerment. No matter how skilled you were, every time God would call a man, out of whatever it is that he does, they must be empowered. Including Mary, the mother of Jesus. Her carrying Jesus for nine months did not empower her. She had to join the 120 to wait until the spirit. Was it not the same spirit that put Jesus in her womb? But that did not empower her.
The Bible is full of stories of people who were absolutely weak. Their humanity was so glaring, but not for too long. At a point in their life and in their experience, they had a strange encounter with the spirit of the living God. Then they were anointed and things turned around in their lives. There is no man of God who can produce God's dimension of results and be a blessing. Just being a wonderful, humane human being, there has to be a translation by the power of God. Are we together? It is very, very important. Zechariah chapter 4, please, and verse 6. The prophet is speaking here. Zechariah 4 and verse 6. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of God unto Joshua Selman, saying, Not by might, human strength, nor by human power, but it is by my spirit. Excelling in your business, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit. Doing the kind of ministry that will bring glory to Jesus, not by might, nor by power. Getting a job, not by mouth, nor by power. Being favored, not by might, nor by power. Are you getting what I'm saying? Breaking a chain that was there before you were born. There were people stronger than you. That chain kept them there. It is not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. You must learn early to give up on the strength of the flesh. It will embarrass you and continue to recycle pain to your life. For by the arm of flesh shall no man prevail. When a spirit is oppressing you, there is no machine that will diagnose it. Machines don't diagnose spirits. They diagnose the effect of their presence. But there is a word that is a discerner. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. In Isaiah chapter 61, the messianic prophecy, we know this theologically to be, he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because, in other words, this is the object, the motive, the motivation behind that. He hath anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek. Then he says, he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Every time I read this scripture, when I get to that prison part, it touches me. Who are these men in prison? Because they still walk around. Yet the Bible says they are not only tied, they are in prison. To open the prison to them that are bound. Verse 2. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God. Then to comfort all them that mourn. 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Look at this. You can give a man beauty. You can say, bring your ashes. I will change it for you. Like you tell somebody, bring dollars. I will give you naira. You actually can be anointed to see a man's life. You are not praying now and say, God change his life. It is within my power. There is an agency that can turn your life around. That men can receive something from heaven that stops them from being human. You can look at a man with ashes, my brothers and my sisters. And within your power, according to the measure of grace, you look at that man and say, bring these ashes. I want to give you beauty. Like an award, like an exchange. And you say, go, you've had beauty. He will doubt it until his result shows. He steps out of that place and all of a sudden the scenario of his chains and all this begin to change and all that he sees is the glory of God. To give them beauty for ashes. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Look how men can become blessings to men. 
that something can come upon your life when you see men mourning you don't counsel you don't sympathize you tell them i see you wearing a garment it's only expressed in your tears let me take that garment away and you can give them a garment of praise that they might be called the oaks or the trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that he might be glorified god wants to be glorified through the empowerment of the saints please listen to me it takes spiritual power to reign it takes more than good intention it takes more than good preaching it takes more than a sincere heart the days that we live in are evil days jesus himself Reveal to us that there is something called the hour of darkness. The hour of darkness. Psalm 63. The value. Showing you and then we'll tie up a few things and pray tonight. You must desire sincerely the power of God. Oh God. You are my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul tested for thee. In my flesh longed for thee. In a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. Why am I seeking you? To see thy power and thy glory in my life. As I have seen in the sanctuary. Lord, I'm seeking you. There, is, there are things around my life that I know only your power can answer. I've tried to use human wisdom. I've tried to use certain things, but I know that I need to outsource an ability that is higher than me. Ah, happy is the man who is trusted with God's power. You will watch life come under obedience to Christ. But when you are not empowered, you can watch your family members go through the things that happen. Let me tell you this. Let me tell you this. You see, everything that happens in our lives can be likened to movie actors. Behind every movie, I don't, I don't do movie, but at least I know a little about it. That when you are acting a movie or drama, there's someone called a director, correct? You may never have the privilege of seeing him. He is at the back scheming things. What you watch is the action, but there is a director. You slap this one twice. No, no, according to my script, you should slap him three times. That means that behind the various scenarios of our lives, there are systems and spirits orchestrating it. The disfavor, the closed door, the unnecessary hardship, the lack of church growth regardless of grace, we focus many times on the events. The events are like probabilities. They are infinite. Behind every one of them are these spirits. And the Bible says, how awe-inspiring are your ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. Hallelujah. I once counseled an elderly man, very old man, and while I sat down listening to him, he barely spoke and he started crying. And I said, sir, just talk to me, what is the issue? And then he told me that all through his life, he has not known what people call victory. That this thing they call victory is strange to him. It's like a man being pregnant. He says, I, I, I don't know anything about victory. I said, why? He said he was never taught some of these things. And he was angry because his life refused to change. This kingdom is a kingdom where in many cases it is the power of God that speaks. And until the power of God speaks like the roaring of a lion, some challenges will not let you go. 
Please listen very carefully. I shared with you in this place, Koinonia, about a woman who was pregnant one time. And then this woman would go to bed and literally see monkeys all around her, Pastor. Monkeys. And she gave birth to a child and the child came out hairy physically like a monkey, dead. How many people have been prayed for here with HIV? Ask them how they got it. They said they came to me in a dream with an injection. Said this is HIV. Injected you in the realm of the spirit and it appeared physically. That means you can change something in the realm of the spirit and then wait for it like a movie too to happen physically. If it started in the realm of the spirit, it must be adjusted there. It doesn't make sense to come from the realm of the spirit and then you adjust it physically. Some things will never change with counseling. Hear me. Some things will never change with time. Some things will never change with advice. You will need a head-on collision with the power of God. There are families where nobody has risen to any level. The last person who tried to rise there because of the little revelation here and there that he got, when he was almost crossing, it drew him back. Power. The power of the Holy Ghost. Jesus knew the necessity of this. He said, tarry in Jerusalem. Don't make a mistake of leaving Jerusalem to start anything without empowerment. I've given you the lecture, but all that lecture will be nonsense if there is no power. I just gave you theory, but what you are going to be seeing there, oh dear, had they not listened to Jesus, you would meet a man called Bar Jesus. You would meet a young girl who was a sorcerer, and she will show you word of knowledge that you had not seen. Listen, let me tell you. The world that is out there is not exactly ignorant. It's just that the knowledge is demonic and diabolic. You know, many times when we teach like this, even me, I get uncomfortable sometimes because everything I say looks like a lie except that it is true. Hmm. It is true. It is true. Bishop Oyedepo gave a story that one time the church would not grow for a long time, regardless of the prayers that were offered. And then they were fasting just like this. Lord, why is the church not growing? And according to him, he said, the spirit of the Lord asked him to go out. And then he checked and saw that there was a blindfold over that ministry. And he cursed it in the name of Jesus. And it rolled like a curtain. From that time, increase began to come. There are people, every good thing you do is misunderstood. It's not normal. Her man was begging. The king called it rape. There are spirits that make good things evil. You come for somebody's program to help him. They say, uh -huh, they have come. You don't come and they say, ah, something is wrong. Is a spirit. Let me tell you, when the devil wants to trap you down, only God can deliver you. Because anything you do will lead to the same result. They box Jesus with a question that both yes and no will put him in trouble. It was not the issue of answering correctly or not. I believe in the power of God. I believe in the power of God. Listen, let me tell you. There are many things you have discussed. It's time to bring them face to face with God's power. You need the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. I am full of power for exploits in the kingdom and that by the spirit of the Lord. I am full of power by the spirit of the Lord. This is what happened to Jesus. He was filled with the Holy Ghost but not with power. And when he was done fasting, the Bible says, and he returned in the power 
of the Holy Spirit. This conference would not have done us justice if it leaves us with just information without power. It takes power to change your situation. It takes power to birth the purposes of God in your life. Just because God said it does not mean it will happen. There is an energy, there is an agency behind. He says his divine power has given us. His word authorizes his power to move. The power will not move until the word authorizes it. But when the word authorizes it and the power is not there, it will still be of non-effect. The dynamics of manifestation is this. Listen, it is not just the union of the word and the power alone. It is that the word is what gives authority. And then the power is what manifests physically to create the change. God's energy, God's ability. Turning people's lives around. Changing people's situations. In Acts chapter 10 and verse 38, the Bible says how God anointed, don't get too used to these scriptures, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about as a result of the power doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. This is a generation that needs the power of God. There are so many things that continue to challenge believers. We need a manifestation of the power of God. In one day, the issue of loyalty to God was settled when power came. Elijah said, let's stop arguing. Go up the mountain. Let's go to Mount Carmel. That the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And then he gave the prophets of Baal room to begin to do everything that they were doing. The Bible says from morning up until night. Do you know the highest dimension of their prayer was sacrifice. When everything failed, they started cutting themselves. He said, pray louder. Maybe he's sleeping. And Baal could not answer them. And then when it was the time of the evening sacrifice, there was a time when the angel of the Lord will come to the earth. Angels are not on the earth just all the time. They will respond to prayers. But there are activities on earth that make for the manifestation of the angelic. Do you know how Haman got the date to destroy Israel? I hope you know there was a date. Haman did not just say to destroy God's people carelessly. Through divination. A spiritual permutation was done and the exact date was there. That means every day is not conducive for everything. This is where spiritual intelligence comes in. Her man, through divination, found out the exact day. The same way there are divine appointments... There are also appointments of darkness. I heard a man of God share a very touching story. And when I heard that story, it really, really blessed me. He said there was a lady who was about to travel. She missed her flight. She felt so bad and cried that he, she missed her flight. Only for her to find out about maybe a, a few hours ago that the plane crashed. The family members were perplexed when they published the names of the people the name of the daughter was not there and they said so what happened she missed the flight and so she went to a train the train still crashed those kinds of people are appointed to die so it doesn't matter whether it's through plane or through this the devil will haunt you until what happens happens just when you think you are done with one breakthrough here is something but then it says to appoint unto them that mourn. The same way that you can put a date to a man's breakthrough and call it today. You can call something that should happen next week and give it a date today by the anointing. 
Samaria was never supposed to be delivered. The prophet gave the date for the deliverance. It was, he, listen, Elisha was not revealing something that would happen anyway. And maybe he was just privy to an advanced information. No. He said, by this time tomorrow, by this time tomorrow, if he didn't say it, the tomorrow will come and the cry will continue. And they will eat the child, the other child that they were arguing about. Do you know how many people's lives you will save when you are anointed? Do you know how many people you will save from going down the grave? Do you know how many people you will lift for going down the grave? There are many people today in the grave who had no business going there. If you're a minister here, please listen to me. We are in the days of his power. If you lack genuine spiritual power, please leave ministry. Just quietly leave ministry. You can find another ministry and help them. But I'm telling you the days that we live in will require genuine spiritual power. The distinguishing factor will be the power of God. Because people will come with burdens that no level of intelligence can solve. Paul said, and I, when I came to you, he said. Remember, Paul was not a dull man. So he was not trying to trivialize knowledge. He says, but when I came to you, I did not come with the excellency of speech. But in the demonstration of power, that your faith may not rest upon the wisdom of man, but upon the power of God. That you carry the power of the Holy Spirit like a drug and enter your house with it. You don't need to pray. Just enter. And all of a sudden, the foundations of your family begins to shake. What is going on in this family? There is a shaking. What dreams are we suddenly having? It's because someone who represents the ark entered that house. Akabaruta siakata. One week after your coming, suddenly three promotions without your prayer. One week after your coming, a strange infirmity that each people in your family gives way. This is proof that God is with you. Let me tell you this. The world is truly tired of our stories. Are we together now? And the impatience continues to grow. We need a generation of men and women, not just preachers. Men and women who understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Many of you are seated here right now. Buffeted by all kinds of challenges. And for many people, they think that the answer to those things, maybe is just some nice discussion with an intelligent man of God. There are times that you need the power of God. Some of you join the queue sometimes to see me. And while you are talking, I just say, it's okay. Don't worry. You are tired. Let me explain. I said, it's okay. I know what the problem is. No matter what other examples you will give, it's the same spirit. Like you tell a doctor, the other day I fell down. Let me tell you the scenario that he said, no, it's epilepsy. He said, no, let me tell you. He said, I found a problem. He said, Even if you say you fell from a bridge, it's still epilepsy. It's working in me. It's working in me. It's God's ability. God's ability. It's working in me. Working in me, it's God's ability. God's ability. Hallelujah. This is why we're gathered tonight. This is why we continue to press. Listen. Joshua Selman cannot be in every home. Joshua Selman cannot be in every office. Joshua Selman cannot be in every school. Joshua Selman cannot be everywhere. There is a problem if he's everywhere.
you are supposed to be an extension of the possibilities of the kingdom within the region that you are in that means that when someone from the regions you have come from is contemplating and say ah i should come for koinonia but maybe i'm challenged financially and the rest you say i bring you good news that which is there is here here by the spirit he said this is that 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 the prophet spoke about this is it again this is that what is the problem i've been trying to see apostle why because things are not working in my family and then one word one word from you will open the gates this is what god is making and it has nothing to do with being a man of god or a woman of god by the time you carry the grace for favor and someone just comes and shakes you good morning sir and he thought he just shook a man and then he leaves and for that day he records breakthroughs in his life he will look for you and say please shake me again i don't know what you did i don't know what happened but you are like the ark of god in the house of obed edom it was dropped there just to let it be under the care of obed edom and in three months 90 days the life of a man changed because something was introduced Jonah carried a spirit into a boat and people were about to die. Jonah didn't pray. Jonah didn't preach. Jonah didn't talk. He was even sleeping. You don't have to be awake for grace to walk. Jonah was sleeping. Yet the anointing was working. That you can turn a man's life around by the spirit bringing glory to the name of the lord as an evidence a testament of the power of god but ye shall receive power acts chapter 1 and verse 8 after that the holy ghost is come upon you you shall receive power not stories power I'm a businessman. Yes, sir. Power. I'm a politician. Yes, sir. You need more power as a politician than a preacher. A preacher has prayer ban. A politician does not have it. They can cover for you before you go for a retreat. But you are a politician. They hit you once you are gone. Listen very carefully. Let me tell you we are living in evil days. It is true. And you must sustain the stamina. The spiritual stamina. The empowerment. How about wealth and increase? Remember the teaching that I did. That you want to prosper and even your soul to prosper. The devil says no way. You choose one. You can't have both. Either your soul prospers or your pocket prospers. And you say, no, in God's economy, we prosper as our souls prosper. You don't sell your soul to prosper. The world's way is that you sell your soul to prosper. That was the exchange that was happening at the mountain. Give me your soul. What shall it profit? When it talks of profit, the commodity of exchange is a man's soul and the world. Like pure water and hundred naira. What shall it profit you? If you use this to buy this. The world soul. Trade by butter. Give me your soul. I will give you access to the cosmos. Is God speaking to someone? Let me tell you something. It takes the force of God's power. For things to change. The force of God's power. And yesterday we spoke about one of the keys. Let me just talk very briefly. One area and then we will pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We spoke about one area. Death. If you remember very carefully. That the price is death. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26. Thank you, my dear. 
Proverbs 23 and verse 26. My son, first instruction, give me your heart. We dealt with that yesterday. So we are switching to the next one. And let thine eyes observe my ways. He's teaching a man a secret here. Your eyes, your heart. Your eyes, your heart. Let your eyes observe my ways. Listen to me. It's an anthem in this ministry that there is a relationship between your spiritual understanding and the manifestation of spiritual power. You know, most times people say there is power in the word of God, and it's not a lie. But the dynamic, most people do not understand. They think that the word of God is just like a charm or a genie, and the moment you have it or recite it, it has power. No! No! In the parable of the sower, Satan came and carried the word, and he was not shaking. He didn't die. He carried the word. Only God knows where he went with it. When Jesus finished fasting, the word finished fasting, Satan appeared and was talking to the word with power on him. He didn't shake under the anointing. He even held Jesus and took him to a mountain. He held the word with power on it. That the word of God can be made of non-effect. There is a system that releases the power of the word. Are we together now? The word of God is a compendium of his ways, his methodology, his systems. Hidden in the systems, when you understand and engage accordingly, then you release the power that lies therein. This is very, very important. For most people, we just think that the word of God is in the recitation of it like a memory verse. Or in the chanting of it like a charm. You know how traditionalists will chant something in front of a masquerade. No. No. The sons of Sceva were speaking what would be in the similitude of scripture. But the demons did not leave. You have to understand this. And let your eyes observe my ways. That means that every part I walk is a pattern you should pay attention to. Observe my ways, how restoration came. Observe my ways, how speed came. Observe my ways, why Satan could not defeat me. He said, be observant. Before you speak, ponder, sila, think by the wisdom of the spirit. Obtain grace and understanding to discern. You can successfully replace the word observe there with the word discern. Discern my ways. We came from the same background. What did you do that suddenly brought favor? Observe my ways. There was something I did that the natural eyes cannot see. We were born the same day. What has happened to you that you have such an investment of the spirit? Observe my ways. When you give me your heart, observe my ways. My path are the paths of pleasantness. Observe my ways. There is a way that cement writes, the Bible says, unto a man. He says, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Jesus said, I am the way, the authorized methodology for results. It is my path. When you follow it, the results are guaranteed. The primary assignment of any man of God, after getting people saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, is to stimulate spiritual enlightenment and understanding by opening them to the ways of God, the methodology, the modus operandi. Please listen very carefully. Things don't just work because they are written in the Bible. Things don't just work because God said they should work. Behind his speakings are his systems. Listen to me. Beyond words, you have to see the lines that connect. This is where the spirit of revelation, of wisdom, and of understanding comes. You have to pray for understanding. The utopian Enoch had his Bible open. He was just coming from church on a chariot on his way to go back home. And the spirit of the Lord took Philip and says to join that chariot. 
And then he even saw that he was reading the messianic prophecy. He said, who is this man? He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Was it he more about someone? He says, understandest what thou readest. How can I accept some man teach me? And then he began to explain. To make all men see. There is a grace that as the exegesis of scripture is as the bread is broken, your eyes suddenly see. This is it. This is where my family is. I've seen it. The word of God becomes for you like a compass. It shows you where you are and where you need to be. And when you have eaten and found it, it shall be a joy and a rejoicing to your soul. Behind the results that we seek. It's not only the word of God. But an understanding of the system allocated for it. Please listen to me. Just because the anointing produced result in an area. Does not mean it will produce result in an area. The anointing flowed through the channel of your understanding to produce that result. And so the same anointing will be profitless if you are barren of spiritual understanding. Imagine with me for a moment that you have a tap that has potentials to gush out a lot of water. And then you have a host. You can use it and you can guarantee that a garden will be watered. What waters the garden is not the host. But without the host, the water will not reach the garden. That host is your understanding. That is the basis of your faith. Faith is the confidence that you get based on God and the integrity of his word and the action you take to validate that confidence. It comes through understanding. Understanding is a real miracle. It's greater than rising up from a wheelchair. And he breathed upon them. He opened their understanding. We need to have a lot of understanding for the results that we seek to command. And I have dished mysteries upon mysteries in this kingdom. One of the strange mystery, the mystery of praise, the secret to exemption. Aye. Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed, they prayed, they prayed, they prayed. There is a kind that goeth by praise. There is a kind that goeth by fasting. There are many kinds. There are dynamics of their operation. And the Bible says Paul and Silas after praying, they praise. And it says all doors open. Not some. All doors open. Praise can open doors. That a man can, he says, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. We've had testimonies in this house where people will lock themselves and write challenges that only God can solve. And sing praises and dance like fools in the presence of that request. And by morning, God will say, you can't do this for me. Was it not a girl's dance that removed a prophet's head? What Jezebel could not do, Herodias, the daughter, did it in a dance. Dance during a man's birthday. He said, what will you want? Even to half of my kingdom. Consulted with thy evil and wicked mother. Who said, remove the head of that prophet. And his head went for it. Do you know the mysteries allocated for the results that you seek? In a dance. Not in a complaint. Praise in a dance. Ah, madam. You're going to lose this pregnancy. From what we are seeing, there is problem. Praise in a dance. Your certificate, everywhere you have taken for a job, they say, sorry, sir, it's too late. Sorry, you are too old. Sorry, you are too young. Sorry, it's women we are looking for. You are a man. Sorry, it's men we are looking for. You are a woman. Sorry, we are looking for Yoruba people. What tribe? I'm Hausa. Sorry, it's Northerners we are looking for. You carry that thing and bring it before God. And say, where is the God of Israel? Where is my job, oh God? Let my dance bring it. You can dance like someone in a bar. 
There's no miracle for that one. But you can dance the dance with understanding. Lord, I'm dancing before the God who can change my life. I'm dancing before the one who has all power. How about the mystery of prayer? God's authorized system of legislature over a territory. You don't legislate by discussion. No. When you want to enforce the value system of God over a spiritual climate, the mechanism allocated for that is prayer. You fortify a spiritual border through the ministry of prayer. He spake a parable. Are you learning something now? That men ought always to pray and not to faint. The mystery that gives you direction over affliction is prayer. It's in prayer that you understand what is going on. You don't pray after you have understood what is happening. Whatever you understand can be aberrated by your pain. It is prayer that purifies the revelation. Is any man afflicted? Not let him understand. Let him pray. Lord, I don't know what is happening, but let prayer filter this thing. And you lock yourself and while you are praying, suddenly the maze, the purity of the revelation comes to you. Prayer. When it was time for Esther to deliver the people, she said, set yourself, Israel, fast. I will also fast with you as I go to the king. It was a matter of life and death. There are mysteries in this kingdom. One of it is the mystery of your seed. Huh. The mystery of your seed. Now I know that it may have been abused here and there. But very few believers understand the power of seed faith. It's not just some Pentecostal gibberish to collect money out of people. Whoever manipulates people, he has God there to judge him. But let me tell you, there are times you are tired of a dimension. And you can connect a seed to your faith. Huh? And smash every Goliath down to pieces with your faith. Seeds have worked wonders in my life. Seeds have worked wonders in this ministry. There was a year I've shared with you where God gave an instruction to sow everything to empty every money in this ministry. Everything. That's suicidal for a man of God to do. Very suicidal. If your ministry is just a prayer group, you can afford that risk. Because whatever it is, the people will understand. And with careless, reckless abandonment, we did that. And in one week, it didn't pass seven days. God did a wonder that till forever will not recover from. Let me tell you, no matter what you do, a time will come when you have to keep quiet and let your speed continue speaking. It's a mystery in the spirit. The prophetic is a mystery that you engage under certain circumstances. Every time the Bible talks of restoration, it does not talk of anything other than the prophetic. Read your Bible. Every time there was a loss in the Bible, it was the ministry of the prophetic that brought it back. Whether it was the axe head, whether it was the bones in the valley of Ezekiel, no matter what it was, the moment the prophetic came, then there would be restoration. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Is God speaking to you tonight? So every challenge that we have, that we stand with tonight, is at the mercy of the power of God, but released through the host of your understanding. Listen to me. It's not just about power, power, fall on me. Mm -mm. When power falls on you, it's the same thing like splashing water everywhere. It must be coordinated through understanding to be channeled to the area where the results are needed. Just wanting power at random without understanding is the same way you fetch water and just throw it everywhere and expect it to coordinate itself into your mouth. There is a cup that fetches that water and it doesn't go to your head. It doesn't go to your legs. You direct it where that water needs to go. 
when you are bathing, even if it's a shower, you don't stand anywhere and it touches you. You position the water. It is not water board's assignment to know where your head is or to know where your face is or to know where the soap is. It's their assignment to release water. It's your assignment to work with your plumber and make sure that water is in a position that can get to every part of your body. So the situation happening with you in that bathroom, the water board is not aware. There was something about the way you turned the whole thing and it's not reaching you. Understanding gives value to power. Most people have power, but they don't have understanding. So it cannot be coordinated to produce results. We like power because of the charismatism that comes around it. But the efficiency of the power of God is produced on the platter of understanding. There's water in a well. Please help me with this. Look at this. Every well has water. But you don't stand in front of a well and bend your head down to drink it. You do that, you are going to fall down and die. The water that was supposed to bless you is now the reason for your death. But the water was packaged in a bottle. And the bottle, the person that designed this bottle designed it to enter your mouth. That's why this is not where you drink from. Are we together? He looked at the size of your mouth and made sure that the bottle would be able to enter there. Now the water can benefit you because the channel gave it coordination. Please understand what I'm teaching you. There are many people, what you may need may not be more power. Truly the power is resident within you. But understanding is what will give it, will channel it accordingly to produce the breakthrough that you need. And I have seen this again and again with many believers. They are not knowledgeable on spiritual things. They lack spiritual intelligence and yet they want the power of God. The divine power of God is like electricity. But you channel it to do the things for you that it wants to do. Trying to receive fresh air from a keyboard is not profitable. Yet it's the same power that powers a keyboard that powers this. So I must understand the dynamics of its conversion. To know if I want fresh air, it's a fan I look for. It's still the same divine power. It is the same divine power, but sometimes it is not expressed in prayer. It's expressed in a dance. Sometimes it's not just expressed in a dance. It's expressed in agreement. Sometimes it's not just expressed in agreement. It's expressed as you quote scripture and speak to the air. Sometimes it is expressed through submitting to a prophetic grace. Regardless of the dimensions, it is still his divine power that makes for that result. Listen to this. Tomorrow is our miracle service. And many of you see the things that happen in the miracle service. And sometimes you wonder, why do you have to do this? There are times that I may call on specific people and minister. And then at the same time, minister to everybody over the same case again. You see, it is his divine power. But the system of operation, there are others until the worship team raises a song, they will not be blessed. The nature of their challenges will require worship. The power of God will flow through the instrument of worship. There are certain people that God's divine power will flow through creativity. When it has to do with wealth, his divine power does not flow through the channel of prayer. So if all you know is prayer, you will heal the sick but remain poor. His divine power is trapped by your bankruptcy of knowledge. You must give his power channels to flow through understanding the more you have spiritual understanding the more you are giving his divine power channels to flow to the various faculties of your life it matters that we have understanding i am powerful i don't doubt you but show me the understanding and i see how far the power can go my understanding is limited to the healing ministry that is the only area you will see the power of God. You will continue to fast and more power will come. But it will be directed towards that area. The day you learn the economic principle of the kingdom, you will see the power released there. It was always there, 
but your bankruptcy of understanding trapped it. Please get what I'm teaching you. It will not do us much to just pray and pray and do impartation. And then the area where you are trusting God for, maybe it's area of speed and promotion. But the only spiritual understanding you have is for restoration. The more you pray, the more you see things being restored. But promotion, you will not get it. And you wonder, God, can't you promote? He says, my power wants to move to the area of your promotion. But the host call understanding that would direct it is barren, unfruitful. And where that light came from was the hiding place of his power. I learned this in life and it changed my life. There were things I didn't know. And I didn't see the power of God in those areas. And for a long time, I would pray and fast and say, God, why? Until the Lord granted me understanding to know that the issue was not more power. The issue was the bankruptcy of spiritual enlightenment that will give it more capacity. Is God speaking to you? Imagine with me an octopus, right? That sea creature with many channels. That's how God wants your understanding to be. His divine power should not only touch your finances alone. It should not only touch this aspect. Listen to me. Let me tell you the truth. I believe with all my heart that there is enough power and grace to produce what you are looking for. Connect that power through your understanding to the problem you are looking for solution from. If what you want is restoration, then use the understanding of the prophetic to channel the power of God to that direction. If you keep praying and God has mercy on you, he will bring a prophet to help you. That's his way of having mercy on you. But he will not violate the system allocated for that breakthrough. Are we together? You want to be promoted in a job. The power of God will not only flow through favor. It will flow through competence. Seest thou a man diligent in his business. Not prayerful in his business. Diligent in his business. He says he shall stand before kings. There is power in diligence. So when you become diligence, a dimension of God's power that never flowed will now start flowing through diligence. If you understand what I'm sharing tonight, you will see the knowledge dimension, the understanding dimension of the power of God. Otherwise, there is no need for knowledge when the anointing comes. What then is the value of spiritual enlightenment? If the anointing just generically solves problems. Why should you anoint me with oil? Then I study the Bible again. What am I looking for? I know what I'm looking for. I'm giving that grace. Channels. Ah, Those who you call wonders. When you see them. They are not like an octopus. They are like an animal with many, many hosts. So almost every area of their life can be touched with understanding. And the power of God. You see possibilities. That's what we came to do tonight. First, to receive more grace. But second, to say, Lord, this side has received your anointing. But this side, I'm trying to get this thing there. It's not working. What is the mystery that channels the power of God to this other area? Naaman was the king and the captain of the Syrian army. He was a valiant man. His discipline and diligence as a military man allowed certain levels of might to flow. But, but, if he knew that the prophetic would solve his problem, he would not be a leper till that time. It was because there was an information he did not know that kept him there. So God used a small slave girl to say, sir, there is a way out of this. Ah, tell somebody there is a way. Please prophesy to someone, say there is a way. 
may not yet be captured in your curriculum of knowledge, but there is a way. There is a way. Do not use your limitation to conclude that God cannot move in that area. Because he can. Because he can. Because he can. Everything God says, listen to me, listen to me. When he releases it, the spirit of revelation will take that prophecy and the power in it and ensure that you have the understanding that connects you to that prophecy. This is how it works. This is how it works. So the more spiritually enlightened I am, it is not the enlightenment that produces results. The enlightenment activates my mind and gives the power of God a channel to flow through. Listen to me. Medical people will tell us many times that when a part of the body is beginning to deteriorate, sometimes it could be that there was a pinched nerve. Is that true? Sometimes it could be that something happened. That is not allowing blood to flow. Because the distribution is that blood should flow all over your body. But for some reason, the heart is still pumping blood. But something may happen to your vein or your artery or something. And just try to create an interference, an inhibition. And for a long time, a part of your body will not receive the supply of oxygen and blood. And as a result, it begins to die. The heart is pumping, but that leg is dying. So it is the doctor's assignment through his knowledge to now create a system. And sometimes the relief is instant. Hmm. This is how it works. We went for a crusade many years ago. Anointed but poor. Yet his divine power was on us. That power was healing the sick. But the police station was waiting for us. Are we together? Couldn't the power stop the police station? It could. Except that the knowledge we needed to allow it get to our finances, it was not there. And then by the mercies of God, he brought that side. Look, when light comes to you, it's a miracle. When light comes to you, now the power of God can flow through you. Let me tell you why certain people's results become very powerful. There are many people who may not have the level of anointing yet, but while they are waiting, they continue to get vast knowledge. It's like you are preparing the host in advance. The day that anointing comes, <sighs> miracles in different areas because they were prepared. I've not met a man of God that can anoint me, but while I wait, what is the key to wealth? While I wait, what is the key to speed? While I wait, so everything is prepared, waiting for the oil to come. Why did he tell the woman, borrow vessels? Borrow many. Borrow a financial vessel. Borrow a speed vessel. Borrow a, a favor vessel. Borrow a restoration vessel. If you return, pour the oil. The oil will come on the speed vessel. The oil will come on this vessel. You see, and when there was no more vessel, the oil not died, not changed, not became powerless. The oil limited by the containers. The prophet saw the woman. He said, your husband didn't know what this oil could do. Even as a prophet and he died. You can be a prophet, but when you don't have vessels, you can die. Please tell me we are going to pray. I came with a word from God to tell you. By the grace of God, this is a place of God's power. But power just resting. You can roll from that door to that door. And the power will be there. And the only channel you gave that power was your prayer life. So you will see increased prayer. You are praying again like never before. And you are saying, but God... Thank you for the grace for prayer. But I said that I want something in my family. And then you fast again. And then more prayer comes. And then when God wants to help you. He will do to you what he did to Martha. Sit down. And listen. Look at how Jesus. Do you know Jesus did not do an impartation service every day. But he did a teaching service. His entire training was 99% teaching. 
And then one day, when they had created channels, he said, now wait, the Holy Ghost, hallelujah. When the Holy Ghost came on them, they prophesied, there was word of knowledge, there was salvation, there was healing, because the channels were ready. My son, give me your heart and observe my ways. Observe my ways. Observe why two people were anointed and yet they could not manifest certain possibilities. This kingdom works through knowledge. The knowledge is not a charm. The dynamics of the operation is that every result is governed by his divine power. But his divine power flows through the host of understanding. The prophets desire to know some things. The power that was on them was enough to help them do certain things. But they were denied. God stopped them and limited them by hiding certain levels of knowledge. So the anointing could not take them far to see some things. That's why God says we are a chosen generation. In other words, people, the prophets long to see these things. They had the power, but the understanding that will allow the power to take them that far was not there. Man of God, my church is not growing. Yet people come and get healed and blessed through my life and they leave me. It is because his divine power is walking through the dimension of understanding you have that allows for healing and allows for deliverance. But there is something about the grace that keeps that you do not know. All that you have given me, I have kept. By what mystery did he keep them? And none is lost except the son of perdition and that that scripture may be fulfilled. There is a grace that keeps. If you have it, you will keep money. If you have it, you will keep children. If you have it, you will keep blessings. If you do not know the mystery that keeps things, you will have them and lose them. You can have breakthrough and lose breakthrough. You can have good things and leave them. Apostle, every time they pray, I get the result. But it leaves after two weeks. I know what is wrong. His divine power is still there. But there is an understanding you need to know about how things can be kept. Let me tell you how you keep things in the kingdom. You hand them over to God. When you hand over things to God, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him. You can't keep that which is committed to you by your power. If they give you a bag of gold, you are running to Central Bank tomorrow. Whether the road is, is busy or not, you will smuggle your gold and run regardless of weather. CB and keep it for me. I trust my God, but not with respect to this gold. Please understand what I teach you. Our time is gone, but we are going to pray. For many years, I continue to ask, why are anointed people limited? I got one of the revelations that the anointing is in decrease and levels. And the anointing, just like currency, can only purchase the spiritual realities below its value. Every level of grace has a spiritual value akin to money. What one million will do is not what 100,000 will do. If what you have is 100,000, you can only buy things from 100,000 and below. If it's a card, you will not even buy 100,000. He must keep something small. So if all the anointing you have is to help people be healed, some can have 10 problems. Come, Sam. Look at this. Please um, sit down. We're going to pray. Let me teach you something. Let me have your attention. Please look. You have to get this thing I'm teaching you now. Look at this. Sam has headache. Just as an, an example. Sam has headache. Are we together? Poverty. Number two. Number three. Delay. Are we together? Number four is what? Huh? 
demonic oppression. Now, I come as a man of God. Sam lists all these problems. When I lay hands on Sam, watch this now. The level of anointing I have will scan through the problems and only the situations that are below the level of anointing that will be solved. He may fall, but you will find out that when he rises up, only headache will be healed. The rest will not be touched because the level of grace. Anointing is not anointing. It's a lie. Go and read your Bible. How God anointed, not just that he anointed, So the level of the anointing can make your challenges relative or otherwise. I used to think anointing is anointing. It just came from the Holy Spirit. Not so, sir. Not so. There are levels, there are dimensions of the anointing. And then when I grow further, I can now come to Sam again. And I say, Sam, what couldn't I solve last year? He says, sir, I listed five cases. Only headache went. I said, well, I've come back with an upgrade. Let's try it again. I lay hands on Sam and suddenly a miracle alert will enter and all this will enter, but that delay will not be solved. So you are a blessing when you are very anointed. So anointed that most of the cases that come to you, there is grace to solve it. Listen, let me tell you this. I can tell you this from experience as a man of God. There are, there are situations I know that the grace that God has put on my life is by far higher than that situation. That's why when I see people come with that thing, I don't even bother wasting time to pray for them. I say, go, it's done. It's within the liberty of my grace to produce that solution. But there are cases that when I see sometimes, I know that I've met a match for my grace. And I need to return back to the secret place. Because when God wants to lift you, he brings people with serious issues. Lord, add church members. Then he brings someone deaf on both ears. And who is not even smelling. He stands before you. Can you hear? No, even small. Not at all. You pray for him. He falls down. He wakes up richer but not healed because the grace that you released was for wealth. Are you seeing why balance is powerful? It's true. I used to wonder why Kenneth Hagin will have meetings 21 day stretch and sick people will come. Sometimes he will not pray for some. He will leave them like that. He will continue studying and growing. One day, he will come back and say, you, come. And that will be it. I now know what he was doing. He was honest with himself. He had a system of gauging. Was it not, was it not Jesus and even the disciples that will discern whether this situation is doable by me? If it was not doable, the one called certain apostles, they were not ashamed. When it has to do with this one, <clears throat> I'm still growing. Please, come. So the disciples pray for an epileptic patient in the name of Jesus. And nothing happened. And Jesus came and said, I know the problem. Two problems. One, the level of anointing it's not there. Almost not there. Number two, your spiritual understanding. Because you saw me heal the sick effortlessly, I casted out the devil out of the gathering. But this kind goeth not. He was introducing them that there is a level where prayer and fasting will introduce a kind of power to you that will help you do certain things. I've shared a revelation with you that every time people fast and pray, it's like a spiritual energy. It's like fire that rises from within them. Do you know what that fire does? I will tell you. When a spirit leaves a man, it goes through desert regions. It's in your Bible, isn't it? And when it goes through desert regions, 
it becomes uncomfortable because a desert is a hot place. And it compares the desert to the body it left. If the body is colder than the desert, it will prefer to return back to the body. So that when a man begins to engage spiritual energy and that fire burns within you, by yourself, that spirit will leave you. The Bible lets us know that anything in the similitude of fire is uncomfortable for spirits. That's why they like water. That's why water is a major part of their habitation. Because there is restfulness there. He makes me lie down in still waters. We are going to pray. The power of the Holy Ghost is upon you. But this night we must cry for understanding. Understanding understanding we'll pray for higher dimensions of power but superior dimensions of sight and understanding rise up on your feet please thank the lord for the word you just heard tonight lift your voice and thank him lift your voice and give him praise we're praying Is someone lifting their voices? I found my way to a higher level. I found my way to greater power. Someone pray. Please lift your voice and pray. Shala pragadiba lada balada ba. Shala pakaruta sada bradikatesh. Karuda sene makora de shi anabalanaba. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, feel this temple. With your presence, yeah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Say, Nanaka, feel this temple. We wait on you. points. Number one, Lord, quicken my understanding. Quicken my understanding. Grant me access to light, spiritual illumination, a comprehension of your methodologies. Tired of guessing, tired of shadow boxing, tired of hoping, Are you praying? Salabarakatos. Hey, na na na, hey, na na na, hey, na na na, hey. 
We are still praying. Look up, please. Hallelujah. Listen. Mention the area where you need a miracle and say, Lord, what is the understanding that connects your power to that area? Lift your voice and pray. Mention the area. Lord, I desire breakthrough. I desire a job. I desire the spirit of revelation. I desire increase in ministry. What is the mystery? What is the key that will allow your power to be channeled in that area? Please pray. Please pray. Show me, O God, like Naaman, a great captain of the Syrian army. But what is the cure for this leprosy? Reveal to me by your spirit. There is a way, there is a way, there is a way, there is a path which no fowl has seen. The whelps of the lion has not gotten there. believers if you are a pastor here listen to me that is why communion service is not powerful because most people think it's about sobo and wafa so they said eat the bread and swallow the the drink and then they smile no when you understand the power you will not even be able to hold the communion set understand it they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. There is more to it. You have done it the way you saw it. There is more to it. We are still going to pray. Father, I'm crying to you. Let my eyes draw a line between your word, my eyes, and my situation. Connect something. Show me a key. Connect a mystery. By the Spirit. I need speed in my life. Open down my eyes. I need restoration in my life. Open down my eyes. I don't doubt your power. My understanding is limiting your power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Listen to me. 
and be very sensitive. Listen. This is why many of you, even after an encounter, nothing happens. Then you go and buy some books and sit with them and then get up and see results. No new impartation happened. In that book, there was a new host that connected a new channel for the power to flow. For a long time, you've been anointed but you wonder why good things leave you. And then suddenly, the law of honor comes to you. You learn that honor is a law. And that when you honor graces, it gives you access. From the lens of that understanding, you will start seeing the power that brings favor flow. I don't have to pray for you for fresh grace for favor. Your understanding connected you. The power is at the mercy of which channel of understanding will allow me flow. It's not a different power that brings healing. That is a different power that brings miracles. It's the same divine power. But the system of operation is what makes the difference. Hallelujah. Understanding. These are mysteries about the anointing that are found by the spirit. Questions that I asked for many years. What is the relationship between knowledge and understanding? Because some people choose knowledge. The word, the word. Other people choose anointing, power. And I said, Lord, there, there's confusion here. I need you. And God said, no, there's no confusion, sir. The word gives you understanding. The power flows through your understanding. Representing the might of Jesus in the face of your situation. That's the power. Prayer point number two. Some of you have understanding already. But like something can happen from the water board. How many of you have seen that because your house is uphill? Even when they bring water. Have you seen that kind of thing? You open, you turn the knob to the last. And it just comes in droplets. And you want to bath, you are in a hurry. So there is something that can help you buy a pumping machine. And interface it between waterboard and your house. And when you put that machine and switch it on, suddenly the water can even enjoy your head because of the speed. That's what many of us need to do. A multiplication of the same thing. That I have it all, but Lord, a higher dimension. I have a 1,000 naira worth of anointing, but I have a 1 million naira worth of problem. Upgrade the grace. Upgrade the grace. Lift your voice and pray. There's no doubt. Lord, I'm a prophet. But upgrade the grace. I've received the anointing for wealth. But upgrade the anointing. A higher measure. Please pray. Believe in what you are praying and pray. Thou anointed my head with oil. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup run it over. My cup run it over. Shelamarakata bradegetich. Embradekatekatekate. Rakata barando shabra dekate. A higher level of grace, a higher level of anointing, a higher investment of spiritual power for signs, for wonders, extraordinary results, strange results. Haro Zagabaranda Kata Elakata Pragata Kato Shada Pradias Acts Chapter Nineteen
from verse 11. There are a class of miracles called special miracles. A miracle in itself is spectacular. But there are miracles called special miracles. And they are wrought by the hands of men, not angels. God wrought special miracles by the hand of Paul. Read on. So that from his body, this is what makes it special. Because the rule is that you have to make contact with the sick. And now from his body were brought to the sick. You had our mother's testimony. Handkerchiefs and aprons and diseases departed. When your handkerchief has a voice, it's a special miracle. Because a handkerchief is not a living thing. Special miracles. It is not everyday anointing that produces special miracles. No. In Acts chapter 2, they were filled. In Acts chapter 4, they were filled. Father, I have seen yesterday's glory. I have seen yesterday's results. But before this fast ends, Lord, shift me to a new level of anointing. I have prophesied. I have seen the sick healed. I spoke to people and their lives changed. A higher dimension. Is someone praying? A higher dimension. I've seen the grace for wealth, but a higher dimension. I've seen the revelatory gifts, the revelatory grace, but a higher dimension. I have seen influence and honor, but a higher dimension. Someone pray. Someone pray. Pray, don't be tired. Hallelujah. Let me share with you something. Second Corinthians chapter 12. We're rounding up. Second Corinthians chapter 12. Please give us from verse 8. We're reading three verses. 8 to 10. For this thing. Listen carefully. I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Let's see how God answered this prayer. This is the prayer of a man who was tired of his situation. Listen to how God is answering a man's prayer. He did his best to handle that situation in his strength. And he could not handle it. Now he's asking God for assistance. And God says, my grace is sufficient. But you don't know how it works. My grace is sufficient. But you don't know how it works. If it is strength you want, then it must be in exchange for weakness. If there is no darkness, Nepa is useless. Listen to me. Very, very powerful. If there are no sick people, Dr. Emeka is not needed. Are we together? If you are not thirsty, even if there is a bag, a drum of pure water here, it doesn't matter to you. So he says, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. 
let me tell you what this happens it's a mystery every time a human being becomes weak something starts happening to the power of god coming to that direction listen carefully weakness is powerful because it attracts the strength of god so when you set your soul to fast as your body begins to become weak the same spirit there is something about your weakness that is calling the power of god when jesus stayed for 40 days the weaker his body the more the holy spirit saw the need to stay it's a deep spiritual mystery jacob wanted a blessing and god looked at him from head to toe there was no weakness he said how do i help you i have to touch something there has to be weakness for my strength to be valuable the treasure cannot be stored in golden vessels the fact that the vessel is earthen makes the power comfortable so that the excellency of power might be of god so when you set your soul to fast god who allowed fasting knows what food does to the body listen carefully if you don't have this revelation you will not understand what we are doing tonight why are you doing a marathon fast that from wednesday you are not eating down till friday do you want to kill yourself what kind of nonsense is this they say you watch what happens there is a level you will get to where you almost want to collapse then watch what happens suddenly like the eagle you will pray and you will be tired have you not noticed that there is a switch every time when you are weak you want to pray you plan to pray for three hours after seven minutes you are tired you don't even know how this will happen but you continue and continue and continue later an agency takes over you and even three hours you can't finish listen listen the power of god hardly starts things he allows you to start and then the power comes and takes you to the flight that's what happens these are very deep spiritual mysteries so these nights that you are not eating now your body is already frustrated there is a level of life and health that the body must have for the mind to walk it's true when you fast your mind also is subject to fasting because your mind feeds off the health of your body that's why when you die your mind does not work so you set your soul to fast every time the nation of israel were about to be overwhelmed by their enemies they will keep their weapons down and declare a fast plus goats plus everything while they are in sackcloth and ashes the spirit of god comes through a prophet this is what god is saying and victory comes i besought the lord thrice take this away from me and it seems like there is a strength in myself that is limiting the power of god so i set my soul in the similitude of weakness through fasting and suddenly his power comes and picks you up many of you will be surprised what will happen it's not hunger starvation it's a mystery that's why i said a joy must be set before you to receive the grace to endure you're going to cry for grace the grace that will keep you through my brothers and my sisters listen let me tell you this let me tell you this if you don't learn this technology you will break down in ministry you see when i left this place i had a meeting till evening it was when i was done just few minutes to the program starting had to tidy up some other things before coming here and i've been standing here you have to learn to exchange your weakness it's a technology you must learn you are more powerful than you are but until you are weak you will not know if a terrorist comes here right now and starts chasing everybody you can run three days without food and you will not be hungry that ability was always there but there was a level of weakness 
that when your body how do I explain this now Holy Spirit just believe with me that subjecting you through this spiritual discipline is not a ritual of men my brothers and my sisters I hate the traditions of men and vain religion that has no power we will never practice anything in this ministry that does not have power and spiritual significance He won't stop till your strength looks like him. He won't stop. No, he won't stop till my life looks like him. God is raising mighty men in this place. God is raising people of power in this place. God is raising sons and daughters in this place. He won't stop. He won't stop till our lives look like Him. He won't stop. He won't stop till my life looks like Him. So when the fast is done, then you will see that your prayer request of 10 years comes in one day. And then you say, Lord, what happened? My strength. Your weakness called for my strength. Your weakness called for my strength. Why does the Bible call fast in humility? Because it's proof that you are weak. And so you call his strength. That they humble their souls in fasting. Lord, if you don't come to help me, I cannot help myself. He says, that's the language I want. Listen, our fast officially ends tomorrow by one. And then we come for the miracle service. Fire will burn in this place tomorrow. That everything that has not been planted by our God, he must let us go. God declared that it is extraordinary fruitfulness. That is the grace that you must carry. There will be a strong impartation in this place. And God will shift us. You are in ministry. Come with your heart open and come rejoicing. Because things must change. Hallelujah. Whatever challenge, whatever has refused to bow, come with it. Come with it to Jesus. And let us see the power of his grace at work in our midst. Don't forget tonight's teaching. Understanding allows the power to flow to the area where the breakthrough is needed. And that you will need greater dimensions of spiritual power to purchase certain possibilities in the spirit. So let this be your prayer all through tonight. Just because you are weak does not mean you should snore yourself till morning till one. Find a corner even in your weakness. If you have to kneel, kneel. You are allowed to drink water. But please trust God for grace to wake up and pray. If you have a neighbor, you have a friend, tap the person. Say in Jesus name, your destiny is calling you. Wake up. Pray. The virgins slept. And there was a call. And they didn't have the time to go and buy extra oil. And because of that, they were in trouble. You have to be alert. You have to pray. And listen for what he will say. There are certain things you cannot think about now. Your body is too weak to allow your mind think it. So your spiritual focus is accurate. You can trust your hearing. The weakness in your body will not allow you to think of the cares of this world. You will be surprised. You try to think about it and see. Your mind will give up. Because the body is weak. The life of the flesh is in the blood. So you can focus and pray. And your mind will be stayed on Jesus. And you travel and push through till victory is established. Father we give you praise tonight. We honor you and we love you. We thank you for your word. Thank you for teaching us your ways. The way of power. 
the way of the anointing, the way of strength, the way of grace. Lord, we decree and declare that we are determined for our profiting to be made manifest in this generation. We are not ashamed to obey you. We are not ashamed to be stretched until scripture is fulfilled in our lives. Father, I pray for your people. Let there be a supply of grace. Let our humanity not catch up. Make sure you are praying. The spirit is always willing. The spirit is always willing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are still going to pray. And I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Father, everything that will cover my hearing and my seeing tonight, I tear it off my life. Lift your voice and pray. Please lift your voice. Pray seriously. Pray seriously. Every flesh that will cover my eyes and cover my ears tonight, I reject it. Are you praying? I'm in a season where I must rise in the spirit and I must rise in destiny. I put pressure on myself for the sake of my destiny. Is someone praying for the sake of your destiny? Is someone praying for the sake of your generation? Give yourself wholly to them. Give yourself wholly to them. That thy profiting may appear unto all. That thy profiting may appear i put myself under pressure tonight for the sake of my destiny for the sake of superior levels in the spirit pray yes you must open you must hear eyes you must see in the name of jesus christ keep praying don't stop don't look around pray focus on jesus and pray tonight my eyes see and my ears hear Take your place. 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 Take your place.
Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Change my life, breathe on me. Lift my life, breathe on me. Lord, I look to you for life. Change my life, breathe on me. Heal my life, breathe on me. Restore my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Lift my life, breathe on me. Bless my life, breathe on me. Change my life, breathe on me. Shalabarande salakata brahaska de in the lekete bransa sasiata kata brada gade balada katush. Pray, it's part of the meeting. Halabara kata brada gade gade bakata. Shalabara katush. Change my life. Change my life. Change my life. Let this not be another meeting. Change my life, oh God. Change my life. Change my life. Change my life. Pray for your life, not your finances. Not your ministry, not your business. Focus on your life. Change my life. Change my life. Tonight is about me, it's about my life. Leave your challenges. If you are not there, your challenges will not be there. Pray for yourself. This is about my life. Emprakata parakato kata bakata regata shekete ne parus kabariata emprakata parakata prakata lekata pratich sekete ne kotos sabradiata bala change my life change my life Hallelujah. Listen. Listen to me, please. Please listen. Many times we focus on the things we want changed, not knowing that the troubles came because you were there. No dead man has trouble. No dead man needs finances. No dead man needs breakthrough. No dead man needs speed. Delay comes because you are there. Speed is needed because you are there. Everything is required because you are there. We focus on everything we want change and forget about ourselves. One of the primary assignments of prayer, listen, is not to petition God to meet needs. It's not even an instrument of warfare to ward off the power of darkness. It's not just a spiritual system of legislature 
one of the major assignments of prayer, and this is where many believers continue to miss it. Prayer was originally designed to change you. Let me show you a scripture. Luke chapter, keep standing. Luke chapter 9. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9, please. Be sensitive tonight. Luke chapter 9. From verse 29. Everybody read. One, two, read. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white glistening. He prayed and nothing around him changed. It was him that changed. When he prayed, his countenance changed, his raiment changed. You can change yourself in prayer. Did you hear what I said? You can change like, a, how many of you have seen a snake molting? It's a system by which they grow, they expand, they come out of their former self into a new self. So when you see that snake, the, 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 the former self, the, the shell of it that is left, is the former one. You can pray yourself into a newer version of yourself. You can pray yourself into a wiser version of yourself. You can, let me tell you this, prayer is not the only key, but whenever prayer is not the key, it becomes the hand that holds the key. If prayer is not the key, then it is the hand that holds the key to the door. Everything plus prayer increases you. Knowledge plus prayer increases you. Grace plus prayer increases you. Are we together? And as he prayed, he didn't say his situation changed. No. He didn't say as he prayed, those, there were times that he prayed and people from a distance were blessed. But this time around, as he prayed, he was the one changing. We're going to see pray a few minutes. This prayer is not for my father. This prayer is not for my bank account. This prayer is not, oh God, take darkness out of my life. This prayer is change me. This is not the best fashion of me. This is not the best. It's, it's, like, an, it's like an incubation room. Bring something out of my prayer life, oh God, that is not what went in. Is someone praying? Lift your voice. Pray. You are praying to be changed. You are not praying for things to change. You are praying to be changed. Fix your eyes on Jesus and pray. They looked unto him and their faces were lightened. Do not say I'm tired. Do not say I'm weak. That's a lie of the devil. Do not say I can't pray. You pray for your destiny by praying for yourself. You change things by changing. Take this weak fashion of myself to a strong fashion, oh God. Take this weak fashion of myself, this weak fashion of a man of God, this weak fashion of a woman, this weak fashion of an entrepreneur, this weak fashion of a career person. Let it be replaced by a strong one.
there is power in prayer pray yourself to strength pray your way to authority pray your way to power in the spirit pray your way to strength but the people that do know their God they shall be strong pray your way to faith that thy profiting may appear unto all that thy profiting may appear unto all that thy profiting may appear unto all your profiting will never 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 appear unto all by default you must pray your way to results pray your way to real power pray your way to strength pray your way to real anointing Pray out weakness from your life. Pray out fear from your life. Out of lukewarmness, pray your way out of doubt and unbelief. Thank you. 
Hallelujah. Please listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Greatness is what you attract to your life by reason of what you are becoming. More than by reason of what you have. Your results a reflection of the transitions happening in your life or otherwise it is cheaper to change yourself than to change things because when you change things must change everything in your life is a statement to your destiny this is where you are in the spirit this is where you are in knowledge this is where you are in destiny Instead of shifting things one by one, shift yourself and everything will rise to follow you. You truly change things by changing. You don't change things. It's harder to change things one by one. Everything you draw to your life is a reflection of what version of you. When you change, your results change. When you change, even the operation of the spirit over your life changes. He does not relate with everybody the same way at every dimension. No. Hallelujah. It's important we pray. The biblical way to deal with weakness is to pray. You pray out a weak version of yourself. If you fail in the day of battle, he say your strength is small. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated. God bless you. Be seated and be sensitive. Please play the strings for me. Mighty God, give you praise. Good evening, everybody. It's my goal and my prayer and my desire that every service 
becomes an experience for someone's life an experience for someone's destiny we've been doing this for many years but we will never take for granted the opportunity that god gives for our growth and our transition every service is prepared intentionally not only to bless not just to honor the continuity of a ministry's program but it's an opportunity for the holy spirit to come once again and to change our lives and among the things we must rebuke is familiarity you must rebuke familiarity i know how god works i know how god moves i know somebody is about to shout i know somebody will roll as usual this is what you expect in koinonia that familiarity will turn you from a partaker to a spectator you can be in a place be a witness a spectator and not a partaker it takes more than just looking around to be a partaker it takes a heart connection an awareness that one moment in god's presence effectively maximized can turn a man's life around people say one word from god can change a man no one word from god does not change a man one word from god received understood and engaged is what will change a man one word from god to change a man is deception the devil has never been afraid of the word of god when the sower sowed it was satan himself that came and carried the seed one word received with meekness the bible says the engrafted word praise the lord i came tonight with a very serious burden um, and many times when the lord wants you to teach teachings that are very very seasonal and very called for especially as the times demand he will bring them not as sermons he will bring them as burdens it will be a strong burden upon your spirit that will refuse to leave praise the lord and um i've been focusing a lot especially about what i just talked about the power of changing things by changing the power of growing to superior realms of results by being the one to grow i think that sometimes we pay so much attention on the things around us we desire changed that we forget that those things are there because of us that means that if i refuse to transit in life no matter what i try to move it will come down back to my level are we together now there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray for yourself let me repeat there are many things you would not need to pray for if you pray on and for yourself that means if you become the project of the growth there are many things you may not need to pray for again it's true in praying for yourself you will find out that you are praying for many other things your prayer life and indeed your destiny will be hard if you focus on any other thing outside yourself pay attention to yourself the development your transition and then you will find out that in doing so you are automatically influencing every result you desire let me repeat what i said earlier on while we're praying that greatness and success is what you attract to yourself not what you pursue what you attract to yourself by reason of who you are becoming if i'm still the person yesterday today then I do not deserve to get any result different from that which I had yesterday. The results you seek cannot come to this version of you. They are to come, but not this version of you. 
The anointing that you seek cannot come upon this version of you. The prosperity you seek cannot enter into the pocket of this version of you. So many times the power of restraint is not always demonic. It is God waiting for the version of you that matches that result. Please listen and learn and grow. This is spiritual intelligence. Not every restraint is an attack from Satan. Not every restraint is proof that there is something demonic. Many times it can be God waiting for the version of you that is fit. It is not because God cannot take the members from 100 to 10,000. It is not because God cannot take your finances from 500 to 10 million. It is not because God cannot take your grace from this level to that level. But it cannot come on this version of you. The Bible says you cannot put new wine in an old wine skin. They are all called wine skins. The difference is old and new. You are still called a human being. But the difference is the old version and the new version. You are still called a man of God. But the man of God before and the new man of God. Ah, Jesus said, why seekest ye the dead? among the living there was a version of me that lied lifeless you saw that version on the ground but it's no longer in the grave a version of me has arisen in the glory of the father not the one that walked the earth now without blood a version of me that lives by another life i learned this in my life and as a person i stopped wasting my time to change things it is hard to change things do you know how many things in your life you have to change if you pursue them one by one think how hard it is to look for good friends think how hard it is to look for quality connections and relationships think how hard it is to look for information every level already has the systems and the provisions waiting the cheapest way listen it is harder for me to try to reach to something higher than me to bring it down to my level it is wiser to grow to that level where it no longer becomes difficult remember if you watch a child growing up like one of these are little ones they try to reach for something and you see the difficulty they can fall many times it is cheaper sometimes they can try and stand upon something that can throw them and then pick what they want but an adult who has grown just comes and he can look from that height and without pressure pick the things that are hard today are not hard it is your level that defines them so if you grow you will find out that they are not so the finances that looks like a monster of a realm lord when will i go out of this it's only the old version of you is looking at the destiny that only the new version of you can enter so it looks hard spiritually lord is it possible that i can step into this how will i start seeing visions what does it look like to see a vision will i be in myself will i fall down is it that i'm dying those are unnecessary questions just grow when you grow and enter those realms by experience you will have those answers there are many things about your biological life you did not need to ask it's a burden to ask every question what happens to me when i'm a teenager what happens when i'm 13 give me a detailed information of what will happen when i'm 14 years it's unnecessary just grow as you grow many times you will find out that you didn't even consciously pay attention to those transitions let me ask you a question do you know where your clothes of 10 years were? Do you know where they are now? Can you remember giving them out? No. Can you remember burning them up? No. Can you remember packing them to keep somewhere? No. They left for these ones to come. It's a mystery you don't understand. Remember where your first phone is? Remember you didn't throw it. Remember you didn't sell it. Remember, you didn't sow it. But where is it? 
Many times we don't know the things around us are living things too. They are governed by laws. They live quietly and we do not know. May the Lord give us understanding. That the things that we call dead are not dead. They can hear and they can see. They are more obedient to the systems of God than us. Are we together? I never had to tell anybody, stop giving me this kind of honorarium. Stop tearing 2A and rolling 500 naira inside and chucking it in my pocket as a bribe. That would be stupid and arrogant. The key is to grow. When you grow, a law prohibits individuals from approaching you that way. Are we together? So many times when you look at the things around you and you don't like them, they were not designed to live. They were designed to be the reality of anybody in that realm. If you don't like them, move to the realm where there are realities that match your desire. Please listen to me. This will give us intelligence. There are many prayers we pray that are, it's just the mercy of God that answers them. They are not wise prayers. They are prayers that are a reflection of spiritual ignorance. Many times the prayer is not take this away from me. Many times the prayer is take me out of this realm. The realities are fixed. They are there. An heir, as long as he's a child, he says, differeth not from a slave, though he be lord of all. He says, but he's under tutors and governors. That means that when you find out there are tutors and governors around, the issue is not to drive them away. The issue is to grow out of childhood and you may not need them again. Praise the Lord. Yes. Another analogy, and then I'll begin to teach on what I have tonight. There are many primary schools, I believe they still do it, where the junior students in that primary school wear short trousers. Is that correct? And then when they get to a particular level, they start to wear long trousers. Now imagine someone in, say, primary two, goes to the teacher and says, look, I'm tall. It's something that came genetically. And because of that, it may not look good on me to wear a short trouser. The rules will not change because of you. But when you change, you change the rules. You don't change the rules by changing the rules. You change the rules by leaving the realm where those rules apply. All rules don't apply the same at every level. It is true. Are we together? So we seek to transit by the spirit to realms where certain things no longer hold. Listen to me. Look up, please. Look up. You're writing, but look up. If you do not pay attention to what I'm saying, this is what will happen to you. Everybody speaks from the reality that his transition has captured. So many times when you hear people speak, you will interpret their speakings from your realm. And based on your realm, it looks untrue. With all humility, if in 24 hours nobody favors me, is proof something is wrong at this level. You see that? Yes. The level God has brought me makes it is either an attack or something about my life 24 hours cannot happen without someone favoring me this is the reality at this level are we together now yes once upon a time if i'm not favored in a year i'll have to be patient for one year to know whether it's an attack or not at the end of that year i say no this year it, it was not like that and then you pray and then you rise to a realm where it becomes a month you rise to a realm where it becomes a week if nobody calls my phone in 24 hours seeking for help something is wrong i will go for a retreat 24 hours i wake up every day without fail with text messages of people needing the grace of god upon my life once upon a time i think something happened to my phone and there was no network. I got up in the morning and flipped my phone and it was empty. 
I said, this is something is wrong. Something has to be wrong. In five hours, my phone did not ring. Nobody sent a text. Something is wrong. I off the phone and put it back. And there the text. I said, this is it. Because that result did not look like my realm. Now, listen, please. Listen to what I'm teaching you. There are levels where if you pray for one hour, you must punish yourself. Hello? This is not religion. You truly must punish yourself because the demand on your life, the daily servicing of your altar, one hour is too small. If you don't meet that target, you must punish yourself by an extended prayer time someday. Why? Because before you finish thanking God for what he has done, the time should have gone. What God has done is to, before you start listening and say, Lord, let me name my blessings. Thank you because the other day they didn't kill my member somewhere. Thank you, oh God, because the wicked did not get a reason to laugh. One hour is already covered. There are people who don't have much to say thank you for. Thank you, Lord, because I'm alive. Thank you because even though my father is alive, Lord, here are my needs. But there are things God has done to you in some realms. It is wicked to use 10 minutes to say thank you. Now, the time someone is interceding is your thanksgiving time. You use that one hour to roll on the ground and say thank you. Sometimes you use 15 minutes to just keep quiet and let your tears say thank you before you start talking. That's why I'm telling you praying for one hour in certain realms is not talking in tongues for one hour. There are activities in some realms that is only intercession and warfare. What and what? Intercession and warfare. Because of the seriousness of where you are. But there are realms that God has given you some level of victory. Intercession will be after a prolonged period of cry and thanksgiving. So two people go to pray. Come, show. Two people go to pray. They represent different realms. One person enters and says, Father, I give you thanks. You are the lion of the tribe of Judah. This is the day or the night, whatever time of the day that the Lord has made. I rejoice. I give thanks. Shut up. And straight you go into, Lord, these are my petitions. Help me. Oh, this is plenty. The list is increasing. Lord, help me. At the point you start praying, you start lamenting. You are right at that realm. You will find out that the person you went to pray with, you will think he cannot pray. This is what you will be doing. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I glorify you. He's praying, no? You are merciful. You are merciful. You are merciful. And a song is playing. Lord, you are merciful. And you are there praying and getting angry. I say, hey, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. You are not at the same realm. Listen carefully. Listen carefully. Listen, that person is taking out time. Later on, you are exhausted, you are thirsty, you are tired. You don't even know you have been praying and miss all around. He knows you are praying and miss. He's not correcting you because there is a provision of God's mercy that whoever is at that realm, God should ignore his mistakes and answer him. So you find out that you are praying a lot of nonsense at that realm and you receive supernatural answers. They are not a proof that you are correct. The person standing here already knows you didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving. You didn't even get to his court. You are shouting around the gate. But God came out and helped you. That is not how he helps men. He just came to help you. Now watch this. This is, if you understand, you will now get what I'm telling you. That your prayer life, imagine that two of you come, you, you truly, with, without, without a sense of pride, two of you cannot be prayer partners. It's not like you can pray together, but you can't be prayer partners. You can only be prayer partners corporately and to round up, maybe belong to the same group. Because this guy is already, he brings out his piece of paper. And there's nothing to bring out. You tell him, all right, pray. And you lie down flat. Only to stand up after two hours. You are not sleeping, you know. It's part of the prayer time. And the guy says, God, bros, I'm tired. I'll finish. I need to go. I'll come back later. And he says, okay, God bless you. There are certain realms where you cannot pray with people. There are things God will do and tell you that requires you alone with him.
So when people are there, he will relate with you in a way and manner that is general. And you have to remain behind because you know you and God have not talked yet. People are there and you are praying generally. Oh Lord, thank you for everything. Okay, may God bless you, sir. We are going to sleep and you tell them go. And then immediately you go. The atmosphere changes. The Holy Spirit now comes as one adorned for that realm. There are ways he cannot relate. The, the weirdness of his operation at that realm cannot be understood by people. Because sometimes as soon as he comes there, you will do things that don't make sense. You will walk alone and fall down and that's it. You are in a vision. And for the next 30 minutes you are there. Do you think that person will leave you alone? He will wake you and shift you till your spirit cannot return back to your body again. So he will allow them go. You don't covet a man's prayer dimension by saying, let that dimension come and meet me. No. You don't have enough testimonies to pray that kind of prayer. You've not gone through enough pain to know what a man will be doing for three hours. Everything in your life is paid for by everybody. You don't know what it means to be attacked. What commission have you been given? What assignment? What, what is the devil going to attack you for? It's just general attacks here and there just to bring down your spiritual life. Nothing serious. So you can stroll around for 10 minutes and go. But there are certain burdens that when, when they are on your head, the time it takes me to pray for one department alone in Koinonia will surprise you. There are, when you know, see, listen, the weight on your head determines how you walk. If you are carrying a cup on your head, you can even leave it and walk around. If you are carrying a headpan, you can walk around. If you are carrying a destiny, the walk is so slippery, God must lead you on how to walk. This is what people do not understand. So this thing people generally call prayer is many things at many realms. That's why you see me encourage people. I, as I began to grow in the things of God, I found out that I cannot pray comfortably in the daytime. My life at this level will not allow me to maximize prayer. The distraction that will come from my phone ringing, I don't off my phone. Whether I'm on pulpit or my phone is, if my phone is off, I'm either taking a flight or maybe something is done. You see that? I charge my phone an average of twice every day. I have to because of you. Do you know living is not general? The concept of living is dimensional. Listen to me. That means when you are tired of certain things, certain experiences around you, someone else is coming into that dimension so you are not going to say lord take away those things your job is to rise to the next dimension are we together now yes once upon a time i remember those days if there were 30 people and i was going to minister to them i would have to lay hands on everybody one by one it was very exhausting and I said, God, there has to be a better way. Once upon a time, if God is talking to me and I see in the spirit that God wants to touch you, I will have to walk to you to touch you for that word to come to pass. That was, it was not what God could do. It was what my renewal and my alignment at that level could allow him to do. And I knew that if I continue that way, what if I have 30 minutes to preach? And God wants to touch 500 people. I follow them one by one. Touch somebody in overflow three. Come back, touch this. How do you touch the people online? And then I said, God, there has to be a way. And he said, of course, there is a way. For I am a man under authority. And I say to one, go. And he goeth. That your words can become you. You don't have to move. Your presence can be poured into your words you can send it on errand backed up by the anointing of the spirit and it will produce the same effect 
And I said, okay, God, what does it take? Let's go. If you are interested. Now, when you rise to that realm, you will see it. And then sometimes a new believer will sit down and be wondering, wow, how does this thing happen? If the Holy Spirit shows me that he wants to touch someone in overflow three now, you see, all I need to do is not just to speak it or say it. You see that? You agree with God. It looks simple until you are taught what really happens. You come and collect the mic and talk. I will tell you when God wants to touch somebody, your job is to just say it. And you will be very surprised to see as if God doesn't love you. So most of this prayer, Lord, why did you disgrace me? I went to this meeting expecting the result of a realm. You went to the meeting with the expectation of a realm you have not entered. Because you saw somebody and you said, no, Abba, this must happen. Are we together? There are people who carry graces. As soon as they sit down and begin to talk, something about the realm and the dimension of God that they walk in will force you to pay attention. They don't have to say, keep quiet. No. There are realms where they say, oh yeah, keep quiet now. Praise God, everybody, listen. But there are realms where there are other provisions. Some spiritual arsenals have been provided that compel men to hear you. So you can see two men of God operating. Everybody's bringing his possibilities. Are we together? Yes. To believe that everybody is just generically carrying eternal life, carrying the Holy Spirit, you are right, but you are wrong. People come with their realms and the possibilities that come with those realms. Listen to me. And that means that if and when you are tired of what you are seeing and you do not like it, the Bible says, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? There is a hill. There is a level where you can rise to. Elijah was sitting uphill and he was able to see those who were coming. And he called down fire on them. He was sitting at an altitude. Physically, but that can also be symbolic of an altitude in the spirit. Papa Iya Deboe can just come and stand on this pulpit and just say thank you and speak and say, let me bless you. I declare that before the end of this week, you will be favored. Now he's speaking from a realm. You will say amen. It may not sound charismatic. It may not sound apostolic. Nobody falls. Nobody rises. But the nature of the spiritual provision that follows his grace will insist that that word comes to pass. Not because you believe it. For the sake of the position he represents to the body. So you see him not say, well, do you have... There are realms where you say, have faith, press... I'm sensing unbelief. You are stopping this thing from happening. Truly, there are dimensions where God does a thing, not just for his name's sake. He does it to honor the covenant he has with the vessels. It's true. That's why you can find somebody will come under a ministry and way before he starts learning how to tight, he will start receiving results of a tighter breakthrough open doors and when you meet him and say you are so successful teach me about success it will be the worst 30 minutes of your life he will vent ignorance from a to z and say why are you succeeding he say, well i don't know and truly he's right he doesn't know and if he makes a mistake to go out of that covering in one week everything will dry because that thing will come his results will come back to look like his true realm do you believe what i'm sharing with you yes the animals did not want to be saved they didn't know how to be saved but they came under the covering of noah's ark it was built with food inside to sustain them the animals would come out after the flood like heroes but where they left alone they would die there are dimensions in the spirit and there are realities that means that 
if I want you to move to another dimension of results, then I must be able to guide you on the principles that will transit you from where you are to where you need to be. There are destinies that no matter how you pray and fast at that level, there are certain levels of the blessings of the Lord that may never be made manifest. Your capacity at that level will not allow God bless you. There is no need for that level of blessing at that level. Are we together? There are things you must be taught. That means every time, come, look up please. That means every time the word of God is coming to you, it's not only edifying you, listen very carefully, it's not only informing you, it's transiting you. That means a possibility exists that you came here, koinonia, at a realm, and by the time we're sharing the grace, you think because you wore the same clothes, you are the same person going out. Immediately you step out, you will find out that the reality that followed you here is not the reality that went out with you. Many of you, especially men of God, come here and you just sit for one meeting. And at the end of it, sometimes you don't even get to see me. And you are prayed for and that's it. All you need to do is go back to your church or your fellowship. And the first surprise is when you open your Bible. Ah, ah, what is this again? Then you stand to pray and it will surprise you let me tell you another thing that will surprise you your worship team members that didn't follow you will start singing and you will think this is koinonia worship team you took something more than you back to your meeting are you seeing that remember you didn't call them to tell them look this is where i went to this is the grace i carried you went quietly but the nature of that grace is like a software it starts reprogramming everything around you to reflect the level you have now entered all of a sudden you find out that if you are someone who were not excellent for instance and you contacted that grace for excellence you come back with it you don't have to start teaching first you will find out that in a span of two months exceptionally excellent people will start coming to your platforms they were called there is a grace that calls them they don't hear you because you are not yet at the level where they hear there are ministries that no matter what branch you open even if they open the branch close to a mosque they must have excellent people it's not like they bring people from the headquarters the grace was designed to ransack the city and look for those who must make the anointing that is upon that level to walk to come There are cities where people hardly get land for church and for certain things. But there are ministries that enter with some graces. As soon as they enter, there must be vacancy. Suddenly somebody gets visa and is going abroad and he leaves his house. And they demolish that house and it becomes a church. The pressure that that grace puts on a territory until there are results. Please listen to what I'm telling you that means there is a grace you can carry that when you stand somewhere it becomes impossible for people to ignore you it's not you you have risen to a level that grace will begin to compel it will orchestrate a scenario that must bring you out no matter where you hide something must happen to the point that if God, if it's a grace at that level, God has mandated that at that level, any time you go, you must be seen and his grace must be acknowledged. So you are humble. And because you are in that place, God, that anointing can make somebody who has no business coming there, who knows you, to come there so that he can announce you and then leave. The grace on your life. There are dimensions of favor that you can enter into. Huh? that even if it's on a saturday night you speak over people they must be blessed even if it's sunday during service it's true it's true there are graces please listen to me 
there are dimensions you get to in the spirit that when you make certain spiritual utterances and say God said even if it's not God that said it because of the realm you occupy he will honor what you have said and rebuke you when you go back are we together that means it is possible for a man of God a prophet to come and see learn this a prophet can come and see that Shehu is supposed to be blessed October that's what the revelation gave and is accurate but I can come with a dimension listen carefully until a higher dimension comes the highest grace that spoke is what works but when a higher grace comes I can make that October become tomorrow I'm not a prophet I came with a realm of intimacy and a covenant that I have with God and I can look at him and say my friend um, something fell down and you gave me look at this I bless you by tomorrow and God will take what it doesn't mean the prophet lied it is the implication of the realm that was introduced <laughs> believers hear this and grow so if you don't understand you may go back and say fake prophet you prophesied nonsense no the prophet himself even that office is in levels a prophet in this realm is not greater than a Christian in this realm the realm which is a reflection of his work with God must bow listen the office that that man has as powerful as it is there is a realm of intimacy you can have with God that equals that office you are not a prophet but the level of dealing you have gotten with your result is the same result a prophet will get so when you stand side by side by with a prophet they will call two of you prophets you are not a prophet you have only transited to a realm where there is no difference between you and the result of a prophet or an apostle These are deep mysteries in the kingdom that many people do not understand. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's powerful. That means if you truly want to be a blessing, more than office, more than titles, seek to be transitioned to a deep dimension of work with the Holy Spirit where there are results you will command that it looks like you are getting results from every office a point will come your members will not even know who you are they said this guy is a prophet but are you really a prophet this guy is an evangelist but you are prophesying more than a prophet and you say you are an evangelist you say god told me i'm an evangelist you started as an evangelist your intimacy took you to the realm where only prophets should get to and took you to a realm higher than that dimension that means it is possible for a man of god you offend to curse you in anger and truly it will happen but a man of god will come who is not a prophet not an apostle not anything but in a dimension of grace he has been given the power he will nullify that thing and say it is true based on this course you should die tomorrow but i hold your hands god look at him for my sake let it go it's true i'm looking for the best way i will help you understand this thing tonight These are the dimensions that are at work in us. That certain things can happen to people because certain people are there. Are we together? Yes. All of these things you see are provisions that God put in place to ensure that the body continues to grow and that we continue to receive results. You can't believe that I've not even touched my message tonight. I just came with a hunger and a burden. Let's see what I can touch. 
I took the A part of what I want to share last week. Responding to the situation that we have that is widespread now. People getting frustrated as to whether the word of God produces results or not. Many of you have seen the rate of suicide and the rate of not armed robbery, not Boko Haram. These are people killing themselves now. A man leaves his family and then they are called that he died. Left a note, I'm tired of life and that's it. And young people also killing themselves. And those who are alive, it's almost as if they are dead already. Depression. Teenagers having depression. Young people having high blood pressure. All kinds of health related issues. There is an answer. I attempted to answer that question last week. Was it or the week before last? That the reason, the first reason that we looked at was because of the nature and the kind of mentorship and teaching. Are we together? I stated that people have been taught that the value of their life is in the abundance of the physical things they get. And so by the time you find out that you are unable to get a car and a house and a child and a husband and a wife and certain things at certain levels, self-inflicted frustration begins to come. Listen carefully. And as a result, people become depressed. You hear people saying, as old as I am, I, I don't have a child, or I don't have a wife, or I don't have a husband, or I don't have my own house. Can you imagine at this age, I'm still renting? Can you imagine this and that? Can you imagine at this age, I have only three girls, no boy, you know, and all of these kinds of things. And I told us that it is because, first, the kinds of teachings, please listen carefully. The kinds of teachings that we have taught people. We have taught people that spirituality, and in many circles, sadly, that spirituality is only measured in the acquisition of physical things. Are we together? So, by the time I have, by the time I have certain things for a prolonged period of time, maybe a house, a car, and all of that, I am perceived to not be growing spiritually. Are we together? Yes. Why do you still have this car after 10 years? Why are you still living here after 20 years? So that pressure to do things, to prove that the word is working. When our, our expectations continually become disappointed, then we are plunged into that state of depression. Are we together? But then tonight's teaching also is an attempt to bring balance to it. To help us understand, it is important for us to get results. And I want to talk um, maybe just a few minutes. Our time is already spent. On the fact that I believe that many people are unable to rise to the realms. Please listen. The realms that will allow their lives reflect the faithfulness of God. Among many things, because we have not learned thank you we have not learned that success is not something you pursue please say after me you do not pursue success you do not pursue greatness there is nobody who tries to pursue success or pursue greatness whether spiritually financially and otherwise that will ever have it it is not something you pursue. Please listen to me. It is something that you draw. It is attracted to your life on the strength of who you become. And listen to me. There are certain traits. Every blessed man, every anointed man, every influential man, everyone that has been trusted with grace and influence will tell you. Listen, there are a set of traits that individuals must possess you call it character you call it whatever it is there are belief systems say belief systems there are there are mindset conditionings that you must be able to have that will allow you to transit like i said earlier to the realms where these things 
effortlessly. Let me tell you this. Every time you struggle unnecessarily to get something, stop immediately. Did you hear what I said? Every time you are struggling unnecessarily to get a thing, stop immediately. It may be proof that you have not acquired the spiritual, the psychological, and the spiritual, maybe sometimes the intellectual stamina to bring that thing. This is rainy season. No farmer would go to the farm and have to labor so much to till the ground. Why? Because part of the provision of the rainy season is a system that softens the soil. Are we together now? But if you try to till the ground by November, December, especially at this part of the country, you're going to have a hard time. So there are certain things we are trying to get. It's proof that although you are trying to reach out and it's running away from you, is telling you something by running that you are not yet qualified for me so instead of running unnecessarily cut away and stay back and build the belief systems build the track record in the spirit that makes for that thing and i tell you whatever it is that left you will come to you and stick to you and refuse to go it is true for finances it is true for ministry it is true for leadership it is true for the anointing. It is true for revelation. It is true for anything. I want to walk you through a few belief systems tonight. Maybe just two, three and we'll pray since our time is gone. That I believe is pivotal to our entering these new seasons that the Lord has spoken to us about. There are many of us who can sense in the spirit that I am at the edge I am, I've exhausted my current level. Are we together now? That financially, spiritually, and otherwise, but let me limit it to uh, the things that pertain unto life, the things that matter to our life, our upkeep, our welfare, and so on and so forth. Because that is what is causing the depression. I don't think anyone will go and kill himself just because he doesn't know God. He would rather fast. He would rather pray. He would rather buy books. But when you are unable to pay the fees of your children, when you are unable to do well, when you are unable to take care of your parents and do all of that, the accumulated frustration can push you to a point. Do you know that in all fairness, I think in the last one or two weeks, I've gotten at least one text every day. People just calling and saying, Apostle, please you have to talk to me. Otherwise, I've been sensing, I've been hearing a voice say I should kill myself. I'm good for nothing repeatedly from different regions and then i knew that this this is terrible hearing voices getting frustrated feeling my life cannot you know my life would not make sense the the latest of the suicide issues i got to hear was a man a father who had a quarrel with his wife this is a true story some of you may have heard it a man who picked a quarrel with his wife and she took out time and blasted him and told him how irresponsible, how shameless, how disappointed she was in him, how sad she felt that she got married to him, and told him, is it that his children were also disappointed? And the last they said was that the man went out. He just left, and that was it. They thought he was kidnapped. They thought he was killed. They didn't see him for a few days, and they thought he was just, you know, men and their anger, until police traced down and they found out that the man had died and they traced that the death was suicide now if you trace i'm not talking against church but if you trace that man will have to be associated with a group a church a fellowship or some kind of spiritual platform that means it is irresponsible for any man of god any spiritual leader to not at least respond to these things listen sociologically speaking men of god are also mind control systems men of god are also agents of transformation and much more than helping people to build their spiritual convictions we must pay attention to make sure that when there is an there is a psychological epidemic within a territory it is wise for every responsible man of God who has a sizable influence over people to contribute in making the people stay in a position that will not allow Satan to bring all of those kinds of predicaments. Are we together? Say, I need results in my life. 
it is true that results are not the basis of our confidence it is true that results are not the object not the motivation behind our pursuit of god and our walk in the faith however as i have said i will continue to say again that results among other things are a system of consolation results are proof that you are adhering to spiritual laws results are also proof in many regards that god is with you not all the time but many times rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from god how do we know for no man can do these things so when god is with you there are some things there are some evidences attestations of his presence that must be there and the lord put it in my heart and i know by experience and by the privilege of mentorship from exceptionally successful people in the faith life financially and so on and so forth that there might be a few things we may be missing as believers or other things that we need to inculcate that can transit us to the levels that we seek to have the results that will make us at ease to know and believe that god is faithful are we together so i want to share with us a few things that just take note of it we'll just take three for the sake of time and then we'll pray tonight hallelujah the first belief system that i want us to learn tonight that helps us to be great and helps us to transit well look up please is that all truly great people do not derive their confidence and their self-worth from the things that are outside them please listen all great people do not derive their self-worth from the abundance of the external things that they have cars houses certificates achievements as powerful as all these things are no truly great man especially in the kingdom derives his self-worth from the abundance of these things that means that when i buy a new shoe when i buy a new cloth then i feel more successful when the cloth spoils i feel less successful that's a terrible way to live are we together now the bible um i think that should be i hope is uh what scripture now is it luke chapter 12 it just came to my spirit let's look at it luke chapter 12 i believe it is jesus was teaching luke chapter 12 yes and verse 15 give it to us please quickly luke chapter 12 and verse 15 everyone please look up his projected here's what the bible says jesus is teaching now and he said unto them take heed and beware of what covetousness greed greed that's the word there greed it says for a man's life consisted not in the abundance of what things which he possesseth. that means the true value of your life and my life is not in cars is not in houses are we together now so you must bring yourself to a point where even though i'm trusting god for a car a house i'm trusting god for um advanced certifications i'm trusting god to go abroad i'm trusting god to increase membership i'm trusting god to have children and so on and so forth my life cannot be and my sense of success cannot be defined by these things you know why because these things vacillate they go up and they go down praise the lord I was sharing i think it was with our school of ministry students yesterday and um it started with the leaders during the leaders meeting um i traveled to one of the states and my phone just fell into mud and water and it was just gone just gone completely and while they were still deciding for me what other phone i would buy to replace that one i decided to take the old phone remember that my old phone that you people hate so much that you've done your best to make sure i throw away you know i dusted the whole thing and i got it back in shape and then when i went for the leaders meeting i could see the body language all the leaders oh not again you could see apostle you've left this you know and all of that and um 
I use the opportunity to start sharing with them a bit of what I'm sharing with you now. Imagine that I tied my sense of self-worth to a, an exceptional phone. I will now begin to tell myself things that I think you are thinking. Ah, that means Apostle's finances is going down. This one that he replaced this phone, maybe he sold it all because he's broke, because he's looking for something. Now, remember, you are not thinking that. It is a make-believe that has come as a result of my tying my self-worth to phones. There are people who cannot leave their homes until they borrow certain things and wear. There are people who cannot, because they have created perceptions. There are men of God and women of God who cannot be themselves. More than half of their life is not them. It's a dangerous way to live. Listen very carefully. I show you a quick way to suicide. Tie your self-worth to things. And sooner or later you'll find out that you will need a knife, you will need a hoe, a cutlass, or a rope to kill yourself because of disappointed expectations. There are people who have tied their self-worth to the quality and the wealth of the kinds of families they have come from. So they will deny their parents because your mother is somewhere, maybe roasting corn or selling something by the road. And the impression that you have given people is that you are an exceptional Harvard type young man who most likely has spent a major part of his life abroad. And now they need to see your mother or your father. And based on your belief system, you think that looking at her and her state will will be a disadvantage to the perception you are proposing so you will call your mother your auntie say just one of our relatives that just came to stay with us i mean even me i'm surprised now seeing her outside you think what i'm saying is silly except for the fact that it is true how many people will never be proud of even their homes where they live your family house yes i know that they use mud to build it but the mud is not inside your mind but simply because you don't want we have a slang that our generation calls this call it falling your hand correct how will i take these people in my department my departmental people want to greet my parents how will i now take them to a house that is smelling the there's humidity even inside the house the carpet i mean everything there are roaches flying around i don't want to be associated with that less the person who wants to marry me who has been perceiving that i'm a lady who was born inside an airplane may now have to make up his mind and change his perception let me advise you and let me encourage you i have a responsibility over you listen to me if you tie your self-worth to anything outside you get set for a shock in this life hallelujah god forbid but if any of my vehicles have break down and it's time for me to come for koinonia i would stop a bike outside quickly and say mr man please take me i'm late and, and you know, members can rob this. They'll say, my apostle, the servant of the living God. You know, they, they will rob it in and make you say, bike, stop. Stop. Let me just go back home. Tell them I'm not around. If you need things to validate who you are, you are in trouble. Because you will never have enough things. That's why we seek to change phones. Listen, let your motivation be a sincere desire to transit to a more effective version of yourself not that it is in the acquisition of these things that's why we are disappointed now i bought the phone now i i got the new hair now i got the clothes i got the designers i expected you to notice it and commend me and you ignored me so frustration starts are we together now did you not notice my perfume have you not noticed that I've changed perfume? What is my business? I'm thinking about my own destiny somewhere. Did you not notice I changed a car? Did you not notice I moved to a house? Have you not noticed that levels have changed? I will never tie anything, my self-worth to anything no matter how great they are i tell you the truth they are mundane things this teaching may not be popular but it's the way of peace it's not teaching you to be a mediocre it's giving you rest rest 
you've heard me say it again anything that is what's taking my life on i put it inside me god holy spirit quality information anything that is too big to enter inside me is not worth my attention people's vehicles spoiled and they they were too embarrassed to go to work why because they say ah Ogasi or your car spoiled my self-worth and your self-worth must be a derivative of who you are in Christ and what he has done and what you now possess so the first thing I'm advising you and listen to me koinonia I have a responsibility over you and over those who are following the mainstream mindset is to receive an applause because of things you bought a new watch how much is this watch 300,000 wow you are wearing a 300,000 watch that's somebody's salary for one year man you are not a small man no, and you enjoy it foolishly not knowing that that watch can be stolen it it can spoil it can leave you god can instruct you to sew it many things can happen around that watch why will you tie your self-worth and then you find out that you are no longer with the watch and then you are just looking someone may be noticing that i'm not wearing the watch uh, well let me just explain god asked me to, who asks you the, nobody is thinking about you as they are looking at you they are thinking about their problems ah, where will i call my mother now oh god let someone send me 400 naira recharge card and you are there in a make-believe of your own manufacture say i reject bondage shout it i reject bondage ah you used to you used to wear a hair of ten thousand before what happened i noticed you have started wearing the one of one one five and two is everything all right with your finance what is your business does the one five oh not stay oh please I noticed you used to bab every two weeks but in the last one week i'm just a concerned brother it's like a, you is that you don't have money if you don't have money use bab just just clean it let it shine let it shine let it shine for god's sake don't be under pressure and say i must do this i must be this if you come to my house and meet me drinking gary i will only put it in a better cup if i honor you but Gary, you must drink. I will not borrow money to buy minerals because of you. No. Listen to me. Be healed of this societal pressure. And let me tell all family people in Kononia, please hear me. Let nobody put pressure on you. Whether a minister, whether a leader, it should not be had in this ministry. That because anybody came to visit they put pressure on you you must fry plantain fry chips if you have it praise god if you don't even if you don't have anything put cold water in the fridge and serve do not derive self-worth don't expect people to treat you unusually just because you bought a new car just because you bought a new house um, just to let you know that levels have changed um, i got a job with nmpc and for starters they gave me 1.5 and uh, because of that i want to see apostle i don't have the time to join the queue can you please fast track the thing i have a seed and the seed is a sizable one what do you think i am that's why it's good for a man of god to be blessed because when you are blessed you are not looking at anybody's envelope and checking the size no no we no man after the flesh Please listen very carefully. Say in the name of Jesus, my confidence and my self-worth will never be on external things. It will be on who I am in Christ and what Jesus has done in my life. So be proud of yourself and be proud of your level. 
if it's only one shoe you have wear it every friday wear it every sunday let us see it as a testament so that the day god blesses you anybody who says it was a mistake you will not be the one to answer i'll say i was a witness i saw that one shoe for two years while he was walking the world are we together sisters don't let any brother come to you in the abundance of substance or things just to toy around with your mind and toy around with your life and say you know i'm this and that and that my father is a governor of which state what is your surname are the states in nigeria many that we don't know my father is a this my father is a king my mother is a this i'm a prince as you see i'm just a humble one no whether you are a prince or not that's not anybody's business people should honor you because of genuine character that you are a man of character that you are a woman of character is a nobler reason for honor than things number two ready <laughs> koinonia is great praise the lord You must conquer greed. Write it down. The one cancer behind the, the restraint of God to bless many people. Greed. 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 You know, most people think rich people are the ones who are greedy. I tell you this sincerely. The reason why many poor people, poor Christians especially, who have an advantage of the Holy Spirit. If you have an advantage of the Holy Spirit and he's watching you poor, there's something you are doing to him. He's there as the advantage in your life. Greed. Many believers are greedy. It's shown in their givings. You started giving 10 naira as a student, as offering. And now you are director. You are given 20 naira. Is that the measure of the lifting of God upon your life? No. Oh. Greed. Closely related to greed, please write. Selfishness. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. Please listen very carefully. Jesus Christ is speaking to us. A selfish generation will never become an impactful generation. What is selfishness? Look at this. Come, doctor. Selfishness and self-centeredness is when you desire something so bad, you do not care what effect it creates on others. Selfishness is not desiring good things. It is desiring good things to the point that you do not care what it does to others. That means that I so want to get to this speaker. I don't care if I match, um, I match and I put Dr. Emeka. I just want to reach there. There are many of us who are like that. Many Nigerians are like that. And I'm cautioning you because it's a spirit everywhere. It's like nobody cares about the effect of what they are, they are wanting to rise causes for others. I want to be a CEO. I will kill anybody if possible to be that CEO. Me, myself. The language of our generation is what is in it for me. Once there is nothing in it for you, it's not your business. No, it's not the language of great people. Great leaders, great leaders are selfless people. Great people are selfless people. The Bible says, looking up to Jesus, Jesus did not come to the earth to pursue an agenda of himself. Please listen to me. I've taught us that it is about us, but not all about us. When your life becomes all about you, then you are in trouble. This ministry was founded upon selflessness. Truly selflessness. Many of you as you are now, God is helping you. But you want to so grow and rise. There is none of our children here that is going to school because of your school fees. 
You are waiting till the day you become a millionaire. Some of them, their school fees is 2,000, 3,000, 10,000. You are so engrossed. You can package 100,000 and bring. Let me lay hands on you to climb the ladder fast. But a little child can come and hug you and say, Uncle, I'm not going to school. Well, let me join. Am I your, am I your, your father? You see that? Selflessness. Selflessness. The selfishness in our world is so terrible. So terrible. People will do anything and not mind. They will, they will hit your car on the road because they want to hurry up. Break your, your, your what they call it, your side mirror and just hold you and say sorry. I see that's the solution to it. I'm in a hurry. To where? How about many of us here? You don't care if your siblings rise. Listen, you are not called to carry everybody's load in your life. But you are called to at least pay attention to the effect of what your rising is creating. You can't ignore everybody and your whole world is about you. Ladies, listen to me. Because you are the ones that are most hit with this mindset. It is always about me. My money is for me. My everything is for me. Someone can give you 2,000 naira recharge card as a seed. You will flash him to call you so you will say thank you. What do we call that? Greed and selfishness. Listen. Listen to me. Many of our parents today, many of our parents, respectfully speaking and with due honor to our elderly people here, many of our parents, this is what closed their door. They were so willing to succeed that they kicked every destiny helper out. And when they got to a place where they needed help, there was nobody to help them now. When they were in the civil service, some of them got to the echelon of their, their pursuit. They never raised anybody. All they were concerned about is me. I must sit down and eat. And now they've retired. No young person can come and say, Sir, in 1995, it was because of you I got a job. Today I've come with a seed to say thank you. Let me tell you, sincerely speaking, many of us here are young people, but let me tell you, if you are old and nobody sees the need to take care of you and to say thank you, it's a sign that you spent your life in selfishness and greed. Are we together? Last year during my birthday, the greatest gift that was given to me was a letter by my little children. They write me letters all the time. They write all kinds of things, but I love their letters and I read every one of it. They draw love, they write Jesus on it, they try to draw my face, they write, you have been a nice daddy, thank you. Those things mean a lot to me than chicken, than whatever it is. You eat those things and go to the toilet and it's all. But those things are a reflection it's a sign that when you are old, those ones, they can come to you and say, make sure this person never cries, even in old age. You say, but he's not your father. He say he was better than my father. If nobody can remember you for good, it's a sign that you are digging the grave already, even while you are alive. Please hear me. Great people are not great because they are pursuing all they want. It's not all about you. Everything God gives you, people should rejoice with you because they know that by the grace of God and with all humility, even if it's the crumbs from the table, it will reach them. I look at us, please look at me. I can tell you why God has not answered your prayer of financial prosperity. He has discerned the extent of greed. That in your being blessed, nobody, nobody, Many of us are so greedy and selfish that anytime you are blessing somebody, they know that you are looking for something. Whether you are looking for a life partner or you are looking for a destiny helper or you are looking for, for something, it is not you to give. I think if I stop giving, it may affect me. I may even fall down and die. 
But you know, Apostle, we are not very blessed. It's you people that God has helped. That is the talk of a greedy person. If you can't give clothes, there is food. One day you can make up your mind to cook two pots of food and call somebody and say, I may not do much now, but I am breaking the spirit of greed. Please come and eat in my house. They come the next day and say, no, no, no. I was only training myself. Don't come every day. Don't be ashamed of saying it because human beings will always take you for granted. You do it once and pursue them and don't feel bad. Tell them, please, at training, I will, when, when I get to that realm, you will come. But for now, come and eat. Are we together? Say in the name of Jesus, the spirit of greed, the spirit of selfishness, I curse it from my life. Many believers are like that. Two women or two men can be talking. I can be talking with Dr. Emeka and in his presence, I will bring out 2,000 naira, buy egg roll and minerals and hold it while we are talking and finish it and eat the egg roll and squeeze the leather and match it. Hapa! It's inhuman to live like that. Giving is living. You must trust God for grace. Don't wait till you are a millionaire. I'm telling you, listen, this, these are belief systems that will make your life exceptional. God will never trust a greedy and a selfish person. When he sends a word to Jacob, it's because Jacob can let that word reach Israel. If God gives you money, can God look at many people in Koinonia today and say, instead of blessing five people and giving them school fees, I know they are coming, but can I bless you? And then they rejoice. The angels rejoice and say, these children have gone to school. Why? Because one person was blessed. What does it take for God to give you a job? What does it take for God to turn the economic tide in your life? It takes more than studying business. Let me tell you. It takes more than we've taught you a lot and you know that there are astute business people in this place. We're not just men of God. We're not daft people. We're economically sound. We're financially sound. But I tell you this. Much more than just the value you give who you are is higher than what you do. I had a conversation of recent with a very wealthy man, such a rare privilege, and I met him, and I asked him one question. I said, sir, let me ask you one question. I said, what kind of people will you be looking for at this level? And he looked at me and smiled and said, Apostle, you are very smart. I said, thank you, sir. My mind was just on the answer. And he said, should I tell you honesty? He said, yes. And then he kept quiet and took a deep breath. He said, I will answer you in a story. And then he told me a story. And at the end of it, he said, let me test. I already told you you're intelligent. What kind of people do you think I'll be needing? I said, trustworthy people. He said, that's it. The morale of the story he gave me was that he would pay any amount to have people who are selfless enough he said every storekeeper and every foreman he employed cheated him and 95 percent of them were christians recommended by pastors he sincerely told me that the non-believers who have handled that branch of his business have been more honest than even the people. Because of greed. 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 Let them know that the word is working. So you steal everything. You steal cement. You steal everything and sell it and quietly cover it up. Do you not know that when truth was buried, it came out of the grave? hallelujah there are very very listen let me teach you this if you are a businessman here please more than value and productivity look for selfless people when you find selfless people you have not found cheap people 
you have found priceless people. Our generation is full of everybody who is looking for everything for myself. Let me quickly cash in on the moment while I have the time. Some of you looking at me now, as born again as you are, let me keep you in a room with plenty money scattered. If I count it, you will behave because it's counted. But let me just scatter it and leave you. You will first check whether there's a CCTV, look around and pray in tongues so that those outside would think there's prayer going on. And you just bend as if you are sweeping and carry one and put in your pocket. Who do you think is watching? God alone? Demons, angels, the demons that will oppress you and you will shout in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Are you joking? Please, I pray for you in the name of Jesus that the grace to be selfless, may that grace come upon you. There are nurses that are not selfless. Is that not so in your hospital? There are doctors that are not selfless. A woman comes, she wants to give birth and they are acting as if, please madam, if you would die, say, just die there. Whereas that woman has been trusting God for a child for 12 years. And you see the greed and the selflessness. Are you from my tribe? Are you from my place? Are you from here? No. Selflessness. I, these are the things I pray for for myself. These are the things that have brought blessings to my life that you show God I told you that the Lord told me if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you there are many of you that desire anointing apostle anoint me and I look at you it's not even God even me I know the things you will do if that anointing really comes you will first run to your enemies and say you are finished you don't know what I'm carrying just know it's over. And if you think I'm joking, you, you will die tomorrow. You, you will die on Thursday. By the time you kill people in a row, in one week, you say, what? This grace is powerful. Even me, I didn't know it's this powerful. Listen to my message. Can God trust you? Go and listen to it. Please, media, let our family online and in diaspora listen to that message. Can God trust you? powerful message many times it is not just in the fasting and the prayer as powerful as it is is positioning yourself god let me be your treasurer on earth the last treasurer betrayed you here is a faithful one and god is saying can i trust you say yes trust me god gives you five hundred thousand. your spirit is still sound your head is still sound and he sees how you bless people you say you did this for me let me take it to another level whereas all your prayer from your small mind is god give me five million. Oh god give me five five million will change my life based on what your mind told you whereas he's thinking of giving you gold as dust and giving you the keys to the hearts of nations lord give me the grace to prophesy as soon as god gives you that grace you just say, I found my stream of income. I'm not wasting my time for anything again. I will never prophesy free. I, it, didn't, it was not, I got the anointing at a cost. And God says, you see your heart? You were there fasting. I warned you. And now that you have the anointing, and because it is valuable, people will now begin to pay. 100,000 per prophecy. 30,000 per prophecy. And the truth is that the grace will work. And while you are paying and paying, you are happy. You are building houses, collecting people's houses, collecting people's cars, and doing all of that. God is watching you. He's watching you because he knows one day you will exhaust that realm. So you will go back again and say, Lord, I'm here. He said, it's not me you are talking to. It's not me you are talking to. I gave you a grace. I saw what you did with that grace. Lord, give me the kind of apostle's grace. And he tests you. 20 missed calls by 1 a.m. You don't answer any one of them. The 21st one you call and say, let me tell you something. I'm a human being too. I sleep. I this. I that. I hate you. Don't do this to me again. The next time you do it. And God says, look at the grace you want. Listen. 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 Please look at me. Selflessness is an unusual virtue. 
that is the reason why not everybody has it why will you reward everybody when they have the same thing dr mike Murdock says that our similarities create our comfort it's our difference that creates our reward hallelujah how far can you go for the sake of people how far can you go for the sake of god some of you have vehicles you've never carried anybody after service even if it's raining you horn them and say you are going and god is watching and you already say no god i'm trusting you to give me one car that i saw on my way going somewhere and god says you think i'm stupid there are some of you even if it's on a bike or a bicycle you will never help anybody may god never give you anything that you will regret yeah. did you hear what i said may god never give you anything that you will say i feel pained that i gave this man this maybe i'll stop here let me just talk about it the third trait you must embrace is humility i have to talk about it our time is gone but spare me two three five minutes humility humility please look at me the bible says love not the world nor the things that are in this world he says if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him then it categorizes the things we can love into three the lust of the eyes the lust of the flesh number three is called the pride of life there are many people please listen to me you see ba africa hear me now i'm not just talking to zaria i'm not just talking to nigeria i'm talking to africa listen to me because of our background huh and the way we have suffered and the way people have looked down on us and some of us because of our cultural context please listen to me there is that itch to be celebrated there is that itch that urge to be perceived as great and valuable are we together and there's nothing wrong with that we call it spotlight is the slang we have for it some of you i just mentioned spotlight you're already laughing i mean you just imagine yourself there's nothing wrong with that except for the fact that pride is one thing that will make god fight a man god will not fight a man because of sin god will not fight a man even because of disobedience but pride he says that god gives opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble one of the one of the one of the greatest justification for pride is wealth and achievement please listen wealth and achievement every time god warned people of pride it had to do with wealth and achievement deuteronomy chapter 8 you don't have to turn there just read the bible says let it not be that when you have what built houses and done this the, done this and that achievement that you will say my power and the might of my hand has given me this and then verse 18 says but thou shalt remember the lord thy god for it is he it is he leave the remaining statement it is he he is the focus humility is not refusing what god has done humility is not simplicity humility is acknowledging god as the basis of every achievement that you have outspokenly in your body language and in your conversation god it is unto you apostle joshua selman the great man changing people ah a man can receive nothing precious people except it is given to him from god it's very difficult for some of you to say this thing why because you feel if i say it i'm taking away the spotlight from me pride there are many people there are many parents 
who would have been lifted but pride pride they will not be good examples look at me let me tell you why some of you are finding it difficult to access the blessings of god to lift you you are not going to be a good model being blessed you are the best christian model at your current state if you rise higher than that especially financially you will kill people some of you if you rise financially your mother your father your siblings and everybody they will kneel down to greet you every morning simply because you paid rent simply because you paid this i failed in life and people i think i'm a failure but now that i've succeeded i will rub it on the face of everybody no that is the way of the world we are kingdom people can you be blessed and still remain humble can you be blessed and still stoop down to people's levels can you be blessed and not disturb people with noisy of your achievement just to just to meet you and say ah um um just to let you know are you aware that i just came back from lagos and uh i flew in you came that's the most important thing whether you crawled whether you drove whether you flew avoid some of those those talks i was in the plane and ah you know i was uh, i was i don't know have you ever sat down in a business class because I'm trying to explain something I don't know if you can understand. You see, let me tell you, this is why many great people are persecuted in the church. Because we don't know how to keep quiet. Success is already loud on itself. If you dare rub it in, members all and sundry will get back at you and they will find a reason to get back at you. Let me tell you something. It is difficult to criticize a humble man even if you are right humility paralyzes you you what will you now say are we together i'm saying this because we are in a very prophetic season where god is lifting many of us many people are not humble they are only broke by the time the blessings of the lord comes you will see the attitude the pungency of pride pride is one thing that is a destroyer even if you kill Satan and all the demons, proud people will still die. There is nothing that gives me beauty and glory as the world shining the light on me. Then I hold the light and shine it. I'm proud to be the usher shining it to say, people, thank God for Joshua Selman and everything. That's why you notice every time people want to celebrate me for anything, I become uncomfortable. When I'm preaching, I can be bold, I can be this. If I drop this mic now, and you start saying, well, there is a man here, that thing Shade was doing. You see that I felt like dying. If I had my way, I would just send my picture to stand and represent me. But some of you, you like it. As joking as it is, some of you, as you are sitting, you are ah, let my month come. If they give me this opportunity, I will first cut the cake and leave back the knife. Let them snap me alone before everybody comes. The urge, the urge, the urge to outshine. Huh? In, in, a, in a secular business way, that's all right. But in a kingdom way, the, the urge to want to just receive vain glory. Please, you must trust God to conquer it. Conquer it. Conquer it. It's one of the big restraints that many of us may face. You know, many times I pray for you. Sincerely, I do. And I ask the Lord, I say, Lord, continue to bless and lift my people. I'm a, among the many things I get impressions of in my spirit is their tendencies. God doesn't directly say pride. Tendencies. Vulnerabilities. Things that can happen that you are not aware of. If you ever think money does not have power, think again. Did you hear what I said? Think again. Money has power. Put money in a ring with any boxer it will beat him out before he enters money is powerful anything that can turn a man around without using sword is powerful anything that can relocate a man without advice is powerful money is powerful but when it begins to come with it it will solve other problems and create others Hallelujah.
Can you let Jesus be seen in your life? Can you be lifted? That 10 million naira just entered your account and you still come for koinonia and just sit down. Not to say, if you push me, if you push me, if you push me, please, I don't have time for thieves now. What happened? God has blessed me. You're laughing. But these are the things that are enshrined in our hearts. So that they will know I'm a big man. So that they will know I'm rich. Well, for your information, that Jeep you are seeing is my car. For your information, just to let you know that uh, I'll be in UK on Tuesday. Quickly touch the US Thursday and I'll try to make coin on you. I'm still coming. God is watching all those things. It's not a testimony you are sharing. There are many things that are not testimonies. Testimonies, the goal of testimonies is edification, not announcement. Edification. So the part you stress in a testimony is the edification. Truly, let me tell you something. I vowed a vow to God. And I said, Lord, whatever you will give me that will make me proud, I'm praying in advance, no matter how I cry, don't answer me. Don't answer me. Humility is a powerful thing. Can you have access and still be humble? Can you have increase and still stay humble? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Don't say we're like that in our family. It means all of you need to hear this message. It doesn't mean you are right just because everybody is like that. We are like that. If we have it, we show it. If we don't have it, we don't show it. But it ought not to be so. Jesus is teaching. When you come into the kingdom, you don't come with the baggages of your belief. You drop it aside and adopt the value system of the kingdom. There is nothing as powerful as being blessed and being humble. Your life is a message in action. In action. And it's amazing that many people what you call wealth is not wealth it's just a test 1.5 and people are in trouble 1.5 entered my account i have 1.5 million oh well now it has gone back to 1.4 i use hundred thousand and while you are talking you may believe you are impressing everybody whereas scattered among you there are accounts that if you see you will not wake up again you will not wake up I'm telling you, it's not the, you, there are some things you act like you are used to seeing. No, there are things you are not used to seeing. You will see things that you will not know what part of your body to react with. And yet, people can have those things and be quiet. Moses had the ability to prophesy from morning till night. The grace of the prophetic was so much in him, yet Moses was quiet. Part of his spirit was taken out. They called elders who had followed him. 70 people received the spirit of Moses. Nobody could keep quiet. Ah, but thus said the Lord from morning till night. And Moses was watching them. Moses said, this thing that is making you make noise, times 10 of it is what was in me, yet I was quiet. Can you have so much and be quiet? Can you know so much and be quiet? There are people, if you know so much, when someone is talking once, is wrong. Let me correct you, sorry. That's what I studied. No, no, that's my field. I won't keep quiet. It is powerful to know so much. There are times that I listen to people as they talk. And many times what they are saying doesn't make a lot of sense. Spiritually and even intellectually. I know a lot more than what they are saying. But I honor them because they have more results than me. I keep quiet and I just hear. You understand what I'm saying? I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And what the man is saying is, is, is quite honestly nonsense. And I just keep quiet and I listen. He say, ah. And sometimes they are, they are flattered. They are impressed because of the whole thing. Just listen and say, yes, sir. And keep quiet. Not, sir. With all due respect, I don't want to talk quiet. We're just keeping quiet. But, Sakai, this your thing is outdated. No. You lose many opportunities like that. In the name of Jesus, may this ministry even with the things that God is doing, bring people who are exceptionally blessed and humbled. That a time will come when people will pack cars, 
that if you want to see it you only come for koinonia and you will not even know who is who people will just be rolling rolling on the ground it's after the grace you will just see a tiny lady say let me rush home you will think she's calling a bike man and she will enter a car that was your dream that you plan to buy in 30 years and you say that's the owner i said that's the owner that lady is a ceo of something he said was she not the one rolling up and down that's a message koinonia extended extended through your life don't brag around and move around making noise i have this i have that listen when you are under pressure to keep saying things it's a sign that you have complex yourself you must be healed be strengthened when god blesses you you cannot hide light we are going to pray our time is up but we must take two or three minutes to pray more than having things these are the things you must become and your life becomes exceptional lord take away my tendencies take away my vulnerabilities take away the things that can happen to me when i rise to certain levels i desire you to take me to certain levels of blessings but lord i know that there are things that are enshrined within my heart that will will limit your workings in my life is someone praying tonight lift your voice and pray tonight's teaching may be a hard teaching but pray is a maker of great people pray i owe everything to you oh god all that i am and all that i will ever become let it be unto you let the name of jesus alone be glorified alone be glorified when men see me may they see you may men not look at me and forget about you may men not look at my results and ignore jesus that when men see my life it will remind them of who god is is someone praying tonight hallelujah the last prayer point because of our time please i want you to pray this with all your heart pray and say lord don't restrain your hand from me i am trustworthy you can trust me with the wealth of the kingdom you can trust me with access you can trust me with influence i will not bring your name i will not bring reproach to your name through the pungency of pride that will come out i will let men know no matter how you lift me i will let men know that jesus is the reason for who and what i am unashamedly consistently intentionally but lord do not withhold your hand of blessings in this season you are lifting men lift me do not withhold new wines from coming upon my life Pray for yourself. Pray for Koinonia. Let it please you, O oh God, to trust me with everything you are pouring in this season. Wisdom, grace, lifting, anointings, access, everything. I receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah praise the lord in one minute please hold the hands of somebody close to you we are going to pray for koinonia as a ministry lord as you lift us you are giving us a voice across this nation you are giving us a voice many of you have seen the mighty things that god is doing in and through this ministry god has made our song a praise to the nations and god has so exalted himself i like you to pray pray and say lord as you lift us we declare that never will there come a time in this ministry where men will see your walkings and forget about jesus lift your voice you love this ministry pray pray online continue the lifting oh god let the teachings continue to transform men let it enter the hands of people we declare it's a vow and a covenant that jesus and him alone will be glorified 
as you announce us as you lift us as you honor us in the name of Jesus we decree and declare pray for everyone connected to this ministry pray for every business pray for every career pray for every achievement and every achiever pray for every business person pray for every ministry connected to this ministry pray for our children father we declare that in this season that you are announcing and lifting men Jesus alone will be glorified hallelujah I pray for you that the things that I share tonight will mean a lot to you if it is lifting in the kingdom you truly desire please when these messages are uploaded get them again and sit down don't say they are simple these are the weightier matters of the kingdom you settle down and listen and pray personally this prayer point you should go back to your secret place and develop it and cry and say lord help me i have defaulted in this area and that area it may be why you're outstretched and you started but something restrained your hand now i know it's not just demons let the heavens be open pour out increase pour out influence i told god as far as my life is concerned please don't have any fear blessing me don't have any restraint blessing me because for as long as i'm alive breathing I will ensure that in and through my life that Jesus is glorified you must adopt that you come from families that like to know who is doing what so that you earn respect you must kill that spirit don't say I'm Yoruba don't say I'm Igbo don't say I'm South South don't say I'm Hausa don't say I'm Middle Belt throw away those things and say I'm a citizen of the kingdom and I must subscribe to the way that kingdom people behave they say this is what you should do but i say this is jesus teaching they say this is what you should do but i say this is the way father i stand representing this ministry and representing the things that you are doing even in this nation and around the world i know that in this season you are truly looking for men you can trust and lord you have put it in my heart as a burden to teach your people the spiritual traits that we must inculcate that position